705. Okay, we have some announcements. Um, Page School Musical Performance and Holiday Luncheon is this Thursday at 11.30 a.m. in the Annex. Free of charge and all are welcome, but you do need to register at 363-1104 or email the Council on Aging at westnewbury.org. Um, Thursday, December 7th at 6, we're having a climate change resiliency information session in the first floor hearing room. Is there going to be an in-person option at that, or is it just remote? Um, I think there is an in-person option. Um, or if nothing else, I think what we'll do is, yeah, it says in-person first floor hearing room right here, or via Zoom. So yeah, there is. Okay, and last I knew it was, yeah. okay, and yeah. it will be recorded in case people miss it. Um, we can do that. Yeah, it's definitely being recorded. It was set up as a virtual event um, at, at the meeting, working meeting we had last Tuesday. I had suggested that we basically host it in person in case there's people who want to come in person. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the group, you know, Elisa and Rick and those on the call seemed to think that was a good idea. So we did put that on our agenda that it would be if people want to watch it in the hearing room, they can, but it's it's being hosted as a virtual event by uh, Gulf of Maine. Okay. Uh, the next item is there's a public information session in person and via Zoom regarding the proposed wetlands bylaw. That's this Wednesday, December 6th at CPM, 6 p.m. And it's in first floor hearing room or the annex? Um, okay. I'm pretty sure it's in here, right? Can you make Angus a full size? Oh, little Angus? No. <laughs> we have a tiny picture of you, Angus. <laughs> there we go. Hey. All right. Oh, I didn't mean he had to take up the whole screen. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. Jim, that's fine. All right. All right. Jim, I think you can set it that um, you can pin two so that they're side by side. Yeah. This is a little 1984 for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very good. Uh, okay. Regular business. Um, item A, public comment. Is there any public comment? Nobody's online. Okay, this is something new we're adding. Just um, two minutes. Anybody who wants to talk about anything, there will be discussion of that item because it's not on the agenda, but we want to give residents the opportunity to speak their mind. Um, I don't have anything relevant to the town, right? Relevant is a subjective term. Relative term. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and let's just go with it. All right, um, item B. I don't know that these minutes are technically consent agenda. Chris be. has not been maybe. Chris is not no, but I right. did note to Max that this is what we wanted to do, but it didn't happen this time okay. around because it was a condensed schedule. Yeah. All right, so I think we should go through them then. Yeah. Um, did you have anything, Chris? Oh, yeah. Okay. On the first 10 minutes on item L, um, very last line, I didn't like the way it was phrased. Um, Aiden Howard, uh, shoddy work. You might want to rephrase that. Okay. Um, not shy, it's just not as expected. Mm -hmm. um, item Q, this is just me personally. Uh, middle one, two, three, four, line down. The proceedings were briefly interrupted by an error sink bug. I think that should be yeah. removed. Yeah. Kind of goofy. Yeah. Um, also in Q, the last sentence was new recharged. It should be. H-I-G-H-E-R. Um, did you have we kind of skip through it? Uh, yeah, I did. Um, I'm gonna go back up to the top. Uh, yeah, let me see. Can I just highlight the word here? Let's read this. I'm in G, two thirds of the way down, the words down and out of that. I think I just want to uh, Okay. Um, then the guest refers to the health department. 
or I'm sorry, the water department or the board of water commissioners. I'm not sure. It just when it says so much of the funds had already been allotted to them. I guess we're speaking to the water, the water department. Water. So yeah. just insert water. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yes. item H, it says Jennings was nominated by Reed. <laughs> I mean, I, that's kind of what I did, but it's not a formal nomination. That's like, so like I was, but I wasn't going to bring that. Yeah. I, I, I actually uh, had a couple of things too. NH? Yeah, I do with NH. Um, uh, I highlighted so as not to confuse West Newburgh residents. I don't think I was specific as to not confusing. I just suggested that we have a specified town hall or the town office building, you know, so using something other than town hall. Um, for the sake of clarity. I think you were concerned about non West Newbury residents. That's what you said. I was concerned about anybody. I just okay. find that this reference, to, you know, we do have a town hall, we do have a town office building, and we ought to be clear which one we're referring to. Because I, on multiple occasions, um, I've encountered people who were confused, but went to the wrong place. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. <clears throat> um, item I, the first sentence, I would just use a different verb than scrapped. Um, my next comment, J. comment was in J. Yeah. yeah, the last sentence is talking about a procedural manual to regulate the creation of trails. It's it's more of a checklist to guide the permitting requirements. Um, so, um, if you need, I can write that sentence out. Sure. Can you? Um, this so is just as more formal than it, it really. Is. Check the checklist, not policy. Yeah. So it's a checklist to to guide um, department review and permitting. Requirements. So, and then Jay, um, in the sense, the challenge of relocating those living in affordable housing for the construction would pose a major issue for this option. I think that was sort of a side conversation where it was mentioned that if the, 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 the housing authority was considering building a second floor. Um, but it seemed the way this is inserted here, it seems as though it's relevant to putting solar on the building which was not it wasn't relevant to that we would say you could almost take that out because that's kind of a side topic okay. um is anything uh, i have item o anything before that um, the first sentence, um, I think my statement was that the Park and Rec Commission misunderstood that um, it wasn't just the housing authority people, uh, housing authority residents that were part of this. Um, they said that a couple times, and I just want to be clear that it's all Western Bridge seniors as well as other towns. And... Mm -hmm. So just so I can understand. And it isn't even just seniors, right? I mean, we, well, this we, program is a council on aging, but okay, yeah, I don't get actually generally, yeah, okay. Um, oh. I, don't, I don't know, I don't see Christine. You can go play if you want, right? Yeah. I think I qualify. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I have to admit that, but I'm with you. It could be worse, it could be on the other side of the ground, but I'll try to address. But, but um, uh, I, I, I didn't realize that we could actually, I, I guess we could probably. I'm sure probably probably showed up. We, we probably wouldn't allow a 50 year old to play in a, in a little league game. So I guess it works the other way, right? I have to try that. Well, you have to. Yeah. All right. Any, anything else? Um, item P, I, was, I asked for clarification on the EP's involvement. I think I was confused. That's all I had on that one. Anybody have anything else, Chris? Okay. Have a motion? Yeah, I move that we approve the uh, <clears throat> minutes as revised for um, November 6, 2023. All okay. favor? Aye. Aye. All right, the next set is uh, November 13th. Just a couple. Declarative verbs. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Um, let me see. Third paragraph, final sentence, uh, torpedoed. <laughs> 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 
I mean, it makes it fun to read the minutes, but I think it's <laughs> no, this year working on Sunday, somebody can look back on it and say, yeah. yeah. All right. Did you have anything else, Chris? Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, it talks about the cost of $264 million for Wea School. That's after reimbursement. I don't want any, it should say that. Okay. Just insert after reimbursement. Yeah. Because after. The, 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 you're comparing the two numbers, it's not clear. Where are we right now? First paragraph. First paragraph, uh, one, two, three, fourth line down. Three hundred. Okay. First paragraph. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. The other thing, it's not in there. I don't know if it should be in there because there's so little knowledge on this. It doesn't state clearly that West Newbury share is fifteen million eight hundred eighty-two thousand five hundred eight dollars, and I think that should be in there somewhere. Was that said in the meeting? Yep. Okay. Um, paragraph that starts with Nathan Kelly, West Newbury resident, teacher testified. I, I think he spoke mm -hmm. what was a jury trial. Here's the um, Then the next one is the paragraph that starts with an unidentified woman. I think she said her name was Kristen Bucco. The Madison. Mm -hmm. um, on the Paragraph prior to that, starting with Kevin Bow, I would just change event into something else. Um, and that's all I had, Rick. Right? Did you have anything? I did. Chris? Nope. I make a motion to approve the minutes of November 13th as amended. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we are on to C. Angus, you're on. Our manager updates. All right, uh, I would actually. <laughs> this is we just changed the format, but I would actually like to uh, keep the capital program to toward the end of the meeting, if that's all right. Sure. I think it's going to generate a fair amount of discussion, and okay. I want to let that you know run its course and not not uh, you know push off the other important items later on the agenda. So item G or I uh, know I can I can hit the other updates if you'd like. No, I, I mean the capital improvement that would go in the discussion item. That's not an action item, really. Oh, yeah, that would be great to move that okay. item G. Yeah. All right. All right. So the other items, the first one, the NEMLEC, the uh, board had voted back in, in August to authorize uh, Chief Dwyer to uh, enter this, and he had talked about the annual budget number. Uh, he sent along the uh interagency agreement and wendy and i both agreed that i could sign this but i did want to go ahead and just share it with the board before executing it um you know i looked through it and it's everything you know it, it's there weren't any surprises but there's a lot to it and it's it's a lengthy document and it referenced bylaws so we tracked those down and added those as well i just want to share that with you if you have any questions about it um and you, you want to talk about those further, uh, we'd probably want to bring the chief into the discussion. Uh, uh, yeah. Or if you didn't have questions, I can go ahead and sign it based on the, the prior vote in August. But at that time, you had some information, but nowhere near this kind of detail. Yeah, we basically had like a press release description from their website. Yeah, right? yeah and that's all I had as well. Right, right. Yeah, yeah I, I, I don't have an objection, but I, it is interesting that there is a fair amount there's you know a fair amount of commitment on the town's part in terms of uh uh resources yeah, that's from the police like department. And and I guess we shouldn't be surprised. I mean, if we're gonna play the game, we're gonna, you know, send people to join the team. Um but but uh I I um I just hadn't thought about it when we originally uh Could considered that have it. Changed your I, you know, it, it wouldn't, it just would have been it wouldn't have been a surprise when I read through this today. Well, that, that's that's changed mine. Yeah, it would have. Yeah. Well, I asked, are there any other commitments or, yeah. or cost to the town? Mm -hmm. And that's we're losing ten percent of your police force at that point to this. That's a a lot. What do you do on the daily operation if you show ten percent? Mm -hmm. They come back, you know, in the future and look for another officer. What kind of temper? I, 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 so, so, right, yeah. what page? Yeah, yeah, for the change. Oh, there uh, you go. Section four is it? Each no. member agency commit 10% of the agency's personnel resources. What, what page are you on here? It's page eight of their bylaws. Yeah. It's not separately noted in the packet. 
again, I'm not going to second guess the chief, and I assume Angus has seen the same thing, but in order to be part of this organization, you give up 10% of your hourly uh, employee. That's a, that's a heck of a commitment. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah, actually, when I, Chris, when I received the proposed, uh, um, you know, MOA with a request to sign it, I actually had not received the bylaws. And so we went and got those separately. Uh, so, yeah, I, I hadn't seen that until we requested it, which was, I think, just in the last couple of weeks. So when I got it, I uh, had shared it with Wendy, although I don't think she had seen the bylaws probably until this packet. I think I had shared the MOA because that's what I received initially. And uh, when I was reading the MOA, you know, I felt like, you know, this is a this is a big binding thing. And we want to make sure that the board is uh, fully supportive uh, before I sign something that commits the town. And then I got the bylaws. We put those in the packet. But... I hadn't separately sent those around, so I don't know if there's anything in there. That's yeah, that's a that's a big one, obviously, Chris. So is this time sensitive? Could could we afford to wait until the next meeting and ask Chief yes. Wachman and discuss? Yeah, we can wait. Yep. Would you like to have that? You can. Again, my question would be for him, but just look. How does how do you just give a ten percent of police force? Hey, Chris, Chris, I think um, as I read through this, their their calculation, their music calculation. I think this opening sentence, each member agency will commit 10% of their agency's personal resources, personnel resources, mm -hmm. to the council operations. I think they've misstated what they're asking for. If you then go through their calculation, so, I, so, I didn't understand that. Either. Yeah, this 10% will be calculated by multiplying 10% of the agency's total number of full time sworn police or per, sworn personnel by eight hours on a monthly basis. So 10% of our total full time is one. By eight hours, so it's eight hours a month. So if if we have ten officers and they're working, call it forty hour weeks for easy numbers, um, then then each of those is each of those people are, are working in excess of one hundred and sixty hours a week, um, and ten times that is sixteen hundred hours. Divided by eight, I mean, it's not even close to. It's it's um well I think you've got to figure out what our hours are that we have available and what ten percent of that yeah. is helpful. Yeah, I, I just think their 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 statement based on the way they show the calculation is done, their statement is is whacked out. Well, it is it is what it says though too. So if you yeah. sign it to the agreement, you want it. So well, are there any other items that you flagged? Just so that <laughs> Mike can be well that was definitely the one that set my hour. Yeah. yeah. Um, my question on the agreement was Angus is going to sign it. Has legal reviewed it? Or are you just comfortable with it? It's not. Uh, I have not sent it to legal, so I, I certainly could do that. I'm sure it's been reviewed by other town councils. Um, uh, yeah, I assume that this, everybody else has joined this group. They've all reviewed it. It's a boilerplate. And, and I'll leave that up to you if it needs to go there. I'm not going to push on that. I think that's the only thing that really. I have somewhere else, but yeah. Uh, uh, I guess, do you know if Chief Dwyer has seen the bylaws? Uh, I don't know that because uh, Rebecca got them. I don't know. Uh, well, let's see. I don't know if. if actually, she said she found them on the NEMLAC website. So I don't know if. Uh, I had I had initially reached out to the chief to ask for a copy of the bylaws, and then Rebecca had followed up and gotten them. I don't know if she talked to him about it. I didn't. Okay, might be worth sending that along to him if we're going to ask him to come in, just so he knows what we're looking yep. at. Yeah, I'll make yeah, sure he's got that. Yeah, a reference to the yeah. to the area. So the other thing I was wondering about here in section four of the just page two of their package, page twenty one of the uh, the packet. Um, and section four reads as a precondition to membership in them, like after January 1st, 2004, municipal member, city or town government must either I or one uh, accept the provisions of chapter 40, section 8G of the general laws, or two 
opted into the statewide public safety mutual aid agreement. And so I just, I, I don't know that we've done either of those. We've completed either of those actions or not. And and, and the town clerk is supposed to attest to that. So I just I wanted to be clear that we had actually had done that. I know we, you know, for for fire, we have mutual aid agreement locally, and I suspect we do locally with police too, but I don't know what the um what we've done exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? All right. Uh, next one, we had the uh, continuing work on the hydraulic study. I had a uh, uh, remote meeting late last week with Tate and Howard to review the comments that we'd submitted that had not been incorporated, and they are working to send us an updated draft. I told them send us a electronic draft, not a pr print bound draft, to just to reinforce the fact that it continues to be a draft until it is uh, accepted by the Water Commission as final. Uh, the one key takeaway that I had, which is was really um, disappointing, uh, but in some ways made some uh, made a key question we had more clear, which is on this issue of the uh, um, lack of reconciliation between the you know main replacement program that the water department's been um, providing for a number of years and the capital project list in the water distribution study, uh, what Steve Denae told me was that the project list in the water distribution study is limited to those improvements needed to address some issue of pressure, fire flow, that kind of thing, that he said it was never scoped or intended from their point of view to be a comprehensive capital plan you all were part of the meetings that we had back in the spring of 2022 with the water commission where i think we were very clear on what we were expecting this study would do but it turns out that's not <laughs> what was uh and i don't know if it's if it's speaking a different language in terms of water or i have to think it's something to do with the you know department leadership that we had at the time um I don't know what it is, but it was a breakdown because the the scope was he told me was never intended to include a comprehensive capital program. It was just those things necessary for hydraulic pressure, which is some, but not by any means all. He said other mains, it's going to be up to the department. If they start experiencing disproportionate number of breaks on those mains, those will go higher on the list. But he said that's going to be up to the you know, superintendent, the water commission, it's not, that's not something they are getting involved with. So that was kind of eye opening to me. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So is that something we need to hire somebody else to do? Or do we feel like the water department can just wing it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, um, you know, I had a conversation Friday. I haven't, you know, I was obviously out sick today, so I haven't talked to, you know, to Mark or anyone on the Water Commission about it. I think it's something they need to um, understand that and then tell us, you know, how much confidence do they have in that water main replacement? Is that some, I mean, it's something the town's been relying on for a lot of years. And, uh, but the focus is always on what's the next project, not, you know, what's five or 10 or 15 years out. It's always on what's the next project and is that a priority? Um, so I think if if their consultant is not providing a comprehensive capital plan, we need to say to them, are they comfortable to do that? And if so, when when can they do that? But that's not something we, we can continue to, you know, wait for Tate and Howard to do because that's not what they're doing. So is that not in their scope? It's I I was taking another look at their scope after that call. Again, this was just on Friday. Uh, yeah. You know, I had a lot of other things to do Friday, Saturday, Sunday for tonight's meeting, you know, and that's why I said maybe it's like lost in translation because the the scope could be um, something that a water person might read and say that, oh, yeah, they're right. I mean, that's exactly what it says. But uh, and at the time, 
I, one, one of the issues that's been the case for a long time is since the contracts are all signed by the Water Commission, they're the ones doing that. All all my office is looking at is uh, or empowered to look at it is is there money there to support the contract? And even that is you know fairly recent that we've formalized that. Um, so I think something got lost in translation. I think we were clear in those meetings that that the select board had with the water commission and with a former superintendent of what we were hoping this would achieve and why the select board was proposing to increase the funding for the study uh substantially above i think they had asked for 425 and it got approved at something like 73,000 so it was a significant increase in budget and i think the board was clear uh, and I know, yeah, I know in those meetings we were clear on what we hoped it would produce, and it didn't. And that's why I wonder if the, you know, if if this was kind of an, you know, I've wondered before, you know, who who's who in the water is really uh, paying close attention to what these scopes say and what they don't say. Yeah. Okay. But as you know, it was a, a transitional time for the department with the outgoing. Um, actually, this was. I'm getting confused on years. No, no, it was the former superintendent. We weren't in the transition yet. Right, right, right. Yeah. But yeah, I actually have the. Uh, I have the contract up in front of me, and. Uh, but actually, no, this is this is yeah, this is an older one. Uh, this is back when it was scoped at the lower amount. So, you know, that that definitely needs to be looked at is what does the contract say and are they correct? I, yeah, is is what they have done responsive to the contract and, and maybe the scope wasn't properly written to yeah. ref reflect what we were hoping it would provide. So where do we go from here then? I mean, if this is not going to give us what we need, um, I, I think. I mean, it seems to me that we first thing to do is to find out can the water department put a reasonable listing together itself without, you know, if if in fact this was not within the scope of the contract, can the water department put together a reasonable listing of its own? And we do have that listing. That was referenced at the last water commissioner's meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and then I know I, I handed a copy of to Mark when we left at the end of the meeting. I think you might have might not have been at the meeting still at that point, Angus, but I had given a copy to him and um, you know, asked if he could take a look at it. And, and you know, we need to, I guess we it seems to me we need to get some feedback from the uh, Board of Water Commissioners or the Water Department, whether or not that list is um, is accurate, and whether there are other things that ought to be on it, and and um, are they properly prioritized? I, I don't know if we're able to do that, but I mean that's to be the first step. You're right, Rick. So what is Tater and Howard getting paid seventy two thousand dollars for that? Well, that's it. Stresses me. I mean, we that, almost doubled their contract, and we're not getting any. Not getting any of that. Yeah. So I think you got to look at the contract. And I think they've already been paid, right, Angus? Uh, most of the money has been paid. Yeah. And I about I think about eighteen of that was for the rate study, which which also had uh, some real flaws. I think the contract has to be looked at. I don't know. That's the one of the part when I rang. It's, it's, it's dicey because the, the one of the parts. Project. We can't keep funding projects if the work is, you know, yeah. not getting done. You can't go into us in that kind of. Well, I, I think at the very least, if there are any future instances where the water department is asking for um, general town funds, um, that this was not paid from general fund. This was paid from water. Oh, okay. So none of it was paid from general. Okay. No, none, none of it was paid from. I thought, of course. Okay. Well, that shouldn't diminish the expectation and responsibility on any project. Well, the source of the funding shouldn't really matter. Well, I don't know about that, Chris. Uh, are you suggesting that that my office is the business manager of the water department? No, that's why I said maybe the, the water department should be looking into this. Right. That's my point. Is the responsibility is because 
it's gotten better now with the current superintendent. He's he's very collaborative and very communicative. That was not the case. And prior to his tenure, we were, you know, given stiff, we were stiff armed anytime we tried to ask any questions. And if I tried to call Tate and Howard, you know, it would be it would be starting World War Three. There was a very, you know, real sense of territorialism. And so, you know, they very much saw that that was, you know, we really had no business getting into that. So that's where I just want to be clear in terms of responsibility. My office doesn't have, you know, we are not empowered, nor are we resourced to be the business manager for the water department. We've we've done much, much more in the last five years than the kind of front office has ever done in water, but it's still, um, you know. You get dragged into it as the town's representative by default. I mean, I understand the chase this down. It's going to have to be the water department because you reasonably don't have the right to pick up the phone and call Taylor and so I would say, we're disappointed. They're going to go, well, we contract with the water department. That's fine. But this is going to have significant impact to the town moving forward. If they're going to come look into the, the rate pay is for you know tens of millions of dollars and they don't even have a, a financial study worked out yet so yeah i definitely think this conversation raises real questions about the you know soundness of the uh, projected capital costs obviously uh you know and whether those are something the water department has real ownership of or whether they are going to need a consultant that to help them but if it's the latter then that was work that we we had thought was already underway yeah okay so i think and, I and actually i'm looking at the uh you know the town meeting booklet from the the 73 7 that was funded and uh, the study will outline the needs for the distribution system, upgrades, update the existing hydraulic model, estimate future demands, and assess water needs for next 20 years, among other benefits. Yeah, I mean, we got to look at the contract, uh, but just that language, the distribution system upgrades, is that, I don't know, what, what he told me is it was limited to anything needed to make fire flow or those kinds of things. Okay. I mean, whether it's Tater and Howard or the water department, there's a huge gap in the expectation of what was there to be able to move any other projects forward in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll meet with Mark and let him know about all this. And uh, yeah, I think this needs to be agended at, at the next Water Commission meeting. And they, they need to either take ownership of the documents that 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 office has produced over the years or if there's deficiencies there they need to acknowledge that so that we we don't rely on them mm -hmm. okay item d uh just you know that memo um uh, nothing uh I, well there might be some new things because there's some things that were added since you saw a month ago, but but that I would just say if if there's questions, you can ask me questions, but you know we're doing a lot um, so of in, we have time packet, to do. Yeah. In the packet you have the award of the grant for the council on aging. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's just informational. We did get that grant. Yeah. Okay. All right. Item uh, 50 yeah. is uh conservation. Um, so there's a letter in here from the Mass Association of Conservation Commissions commending Michelle for completing the um, fundamentals training program. Um, and she's also been the primary mover on the wetlands bylaw revisions. So um, she's really doing great work for the town. Yeah. Um, and item E, board commission committee updates. Um, so first up is review of the select board questionnaire for on um, the no committee. So let's see. Oh, that was a separate. Do you both have that? Did you receive that today? Yeah, I just know I put it in my packet. Um, 
Are you able to, to share that, Jim? Can you pull that? So um, Matt is here. He's the new chair. Hey, Matt, do you know Matt? No, I don't. Matt John, John, sorry. Right. Rick Parker. I always want to know your work. I think, I think <laughs> that's great. <laughs> no, nice to meet you guys. Yes, yeah, like I had the joy of having Wendy at the last meeting. So yeah. So great. he lives on Mill Pond. Great. An active user and yeah. Stepped into the role. Great. Perfect. Um. So why don't we just take any questions or comments and then um, that's here to, to discuss. I have two questions and one probably is a little more often <laughs> than anything. Mm -hmm. What what is the policy on dogs at Hill Pond? Because that seems to be the biggest beat that people have. Which is yeah, I mean I think we're prepared to speak on that because that is and with that being said, if you look on here, we're um we're revising our management plan, and it's one of the things on the agenda that we're actually going to have. So we're looking to do our meetings in person quarterly. Those are the big meetings. And that topic of our management plan is going to be on the big spring meeting. So I can't speak solely on that, since that would be something we'd have to speak on the committee. As of right now, we yes, we do have uh, no wish. You can have the wish list in our management plan. Mm -hmm. and Wait, so this are you talking about the Mill Pond Management Plan, the CR, or is this something in the Mill Pond Management okay. Plan? Okay. Yeah, it's not okay. obviously the rest. So I can't, but I can't obviously I didn't come prepared for that. Right. That, I didn't, but, with that, that, that documentation in front of me. So I, I and that seems to be the the, the touchstone for a lot of people on Mill Pond. And personally, I stopped even going there yeah. four yeah. or five years ago because you couldn't walk without dog. I think we have a dog we, on a leash, they come and attack the dog. And I read recently there's been other issues there. So, yeah. and when you ask people about it, they say, oh, you can have a dog off leash at Mill Pond. Uh, Mike, I'm just trying to. I will also advocate that Mill Pond is probably by far the most heavily used open space in West Newburgh. And without going down this road a mile, I, I think we are facing typically a lot of pulling of. Um, forms of authority on different groups and different different wants and needs to this huge recreational area that we're supervising. Uh, we're not supervising really because we don't have policing authority. So, you know, the question has always been um, either if the management plan does change or something comes along, really who would enforce that? We, do we have a dog agent? Do we have, who, who comes in to, Enforce that, and I understand you know the thought might be, well, we don't see it other places. I, I don't think there's anywhere else in West Newbury right now that you have that that foot traffic, that crowd, you know, at all for 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 hiking or recreation or dog walking, etc. But the disconnect is we have a town bylaw. I brought that and looked it up. Unless the dog is on your own property anywhere in town, it's got to be on a leash. Yeah, like I said, I, I didn't compare this. Chris, to I'm sorry to interrupt. Property. Yeah. That, that, the, the bylaw says that dogs have to be under the owner's control. And this has been something that's been debated for many years in town as to what that means to be under the owner's control. But the uh, when you really read through the Mill Pond Management Plan, it does specify there are certain areas on both Mill Pond and Pipestave where the dog has to be leashed. And a couple of years ago, Wayne and I worked on this because we felt it was not clearly communicated uh where those areas were because um uh, you know you have to read through the management plan and it refers to dogs in i think three or four different locations uh, i don't know if i can do a screen share but i do have maps that i could put up for showing both for mill pond and pipe stave which areas as defined in the management plan the dogs specifically have to be leashed uh, outside those areas, and those actually were turned into signs. I haven't been out there in a while, but I, I know Wayne was 
putting. My question, Angus, would be how can they um, make a regulation different there than the town bylaw? They're basically saying they have the exception. How do they get that exception? My understanding, the town bylaw says it doesn't say dogs have to be leashed. Or, as you say, control. Right. That's that's the, the issue. That's where people have argued for many, you know, there have been a lot of meetings where people have argued vociferously as to whether voice control counts as control and whose who's call is that because an owner may may say that their dog's under their control, but the dog may not be under their control. So I don't want to get too Okay, yeah, I, I didn't intend to either, but that's yeah. just an issue I think that is the it's a very hot topic. Yeah, like, so, we, so that. this came up a couple of years ago and Wayne and Angus worked on refining that and the animal control officer does stop down there more frequently. I actually got an email from our resident that said, why is the animal control officer telling me to put my dog on a leash in the parking area? It's not. So So she is, um, I don't know if you've seen her now. No, but that's yeah. good to know because I yeah. think it's something that we've all been kind of curious. Obviously, we stop in the middle of Honda yeah. Bearing Times, so we haven't seen it yet, but that's good to know. Yeah, she I've is also gotten tickets from people yeah. that weren't able to call their dogs and they were fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. no, because I mean, that's, that's, I think, the start of the conversation right there. I will mm -hmm. pass that back. Once again, you guys are more welcome. I will definitely put that on the agenda for the big spring meeting. But obviously, there's a lot of things we're going to be talking about. Anything we talk about, and that obviously comes back to you guys. And that might be, obviously, sounds like it's a focus for me to bring back to my members and say, let's, you know, let's be you said talk on the that. highest utilized resources in town. But I personally won't use it because it's, yes. it's impossible if you have a dog there. So that it takes it right off the table for me being able to use it. Definitely, definitely. I just, I can't, yeah, I obviously couldn't speak for all my members and I couldn't speak for everyone on that side. So we're now. too far down the wrong path. Is. <laughs> Another question, whereas we're getting uh, Sawmill Brook property, mm -hmm. will there be any overlap as to how they take care of that in the future or how does, who's going to be? So I don't know if you saw Angus's um, email today that the, the Conservation Commission has charge and um, okay. of that property okay. but but as part of the land grant they have to come up with a management plan for it so it'll be a separate plan what was the email yeah yeah number 42. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just something that could be coming down the road that yes absolutely it might be an yeah. expanding process for them. Yeah. um so accomplishments since the last evaluation um Lots of new membership. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And um, uh, at, at least three live right on the pond, right? That's the goal. Yeah. Well, the goal is always make sure that, you know, because then we have eyes, eyes on the, yeah, eyes eyes on the that's, property. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a great thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the water chestnut removal is noted here. Dog waste removal. These are all great things. All right. So, priorities for next. Uh, so, review the management plan. You've mentioned that. Um, you want to talk about the events that you're planning? I yeah, we're, can I, we're, yeah. Sure. Go ahead. Um, so on the water chestnuts, um, or you, I, you know, I know Jason. Jason, Jason I helped with it. Yes, we're not. We're not the ones. This is a. This no, is a well, no. Well, 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 actually, no. It's, it's it's you know. I think it could be Mill Pond Committee. Yes. Um, and and um, I guess what I'm hoping is that you know, two or three times a year, somebody paddles around and and looks and. And removes um, any water chestnuts that are that are visible. Any I, water chestnut plants. I think the base of plants between us and open space right now is a, is a big focus. And I think where we're where we're getting close to, and with Michelle being full time, really yeah. helping a lot. I think we're going to be for a uh, more routine maintenance of everything. So yes, great. Having our members being able to identify them was like key. Yeah, I mean this is this is this is the start. And then yes, I think I think the goal is now that we're fighting the battle of cases, we're going right. to have to create some kind of routine routine maintenance. Right, right. So yeah, you know, that we hit the blue green algae the year before. We did not <clears throat> we didn't have a hard time with it this year, but even that, you know, having having members on our committee now have an open eye to okay, I see it. Now what do we do? Do we you know we have to alert, we have to alert that we have, you know blue green algae and you know what what do you have to do from there do you have to be ahead on that because there's things you can do so yeah to learn it yeah <laughs> you know on that the whole invasive issue i mean you might working with the conservation agent you might maybe you can organize 
between you and the conservation agent, maybe, or you know, between your committee and the conservation agent, maybe can organize uh, a volunteer day or days similar to what yeah. was done at uh, Jerry Dell. Definitely. Yeah. Great. Thanks. So, Matt, at your last meeting, you were talking about instead of a winter carnival, what, what is the plan? Yeah. Is? So, well, so the four, first goal is to, to have seasonal events, and I think we've had a, a lot of board members talk about just that that Mill Pond building being really used as a uh, as a as as an event center. We've had a hard time because historically we've depended on the Winter Carnival, which is really hard to pull off. Ever since I got on, we've all wanted to do it every year, and the weather for one reason reason or another hasn't cooperated. So. What we're looking to do right now is we're looking to do something that I guess has historically been done at Mill Pond, which is use that building as a woman hut on select days, weather permitted on you know a Saturday or Sunday if the weather's right, and to have activities, um, hikes, um, hot chocolate, donuts, but really kind of leave it open, just try to. I think that's when you say uh, we're having an open house would be the first way we're going to put it is, you know, so uh, I have actually a flyer for that. I don't know. This is the moment to present that. But we did create a flyer. I'm show you guys that event. We have nothing official, but we do have, we talked to Dwyer about uh, fire permits for having the fire pits, yeah. and that's all set and ready to go. And yeah, Saturday, January fourth. That's it. Be there. Be there. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, and you know, I think the goal is to keep it flexible in the sense of, hey, can I get a member to get down there? And if the weather looks good, and we're we're on a Monday going to the weekend, can we put a post out? Can we can we can we get that on the board up front? And can we and if we can keep it routine enough, just you know, just like you guys have. You know, the music night on Thursdays, maybe we can get something kind of rolling because there's a lot of people who participate down there between ice fishing and skating and everything. And I think, you know, we should, you know, have the building open and try and use it to its most. Um, so that's that's the winter event. I think the spring we've been working with the PTO and uh, we had, you know, this is improved, but last year we ran in a movie night on the pond and that was pretty successful. I think we had you know, just south of 100 people. Wow. <laughs> we, we really did, yeah. It had a, it had a nice turnout, family event. How, how did um, you do that? I was, I remember what you did. I was curious though, what, what did you, how did you, what did you project on for a screen? Uh, the blow-up screen. Yeah, they, they, they have these rental agencies and you okay. can get a screen and the PTO does one in the, the fall. So we were kind of up against it and we said, you know, this is a rinse and repeat event and, you know, this will invite people down there and the kids had an awesome time. It was, a little while, but it went well, you know. And I think if we can keep that one going, we'll add on. And so now we just need two more. <laughs> we just need two more because the goal is to have one for every season. Right. So write people down. So it sounds like there's been a lot of collaboration with the Open Space Committee recently. If you yeah, 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 right. definitely. So um, signage is you're working on with at some point, not really, yes, but consistent signage throughout town properties for trails. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this is I think a great thing about this questionnaire. And I think Dr. Wendy about this in the sense that you know here we were, and at one point we put a lot of uh, hours into uh, looking in and game planning, a reblazing the trail, so, you know, reblazing, reorganizing the trail, redoing our trail map, all that, right? And we got pretty, pretty close to a final, final product while realizing simultaneously open space is kind of working on something themselves. And, you know, so this is a perfect time for us to be doing this. And then for you guys to see it, for everyone else to see it, for us to say, oh, maybe we need to have some. Uh, some sidebar meetings and stuff so that we're not, you know, we're not doing all the same thing that we can, you know, be a little bit more productive. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. Um, so I like to look at how you think the select board and town manager can better support. Um, so the liaison, you think that's going to be successful? Also, grants and other funding sources, I guess that's a big one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's there's some big projects that are a little bit beyond our our, our monthly budget that, that could come up, especially environmentally. And you know, I know Graham's been probably meeting you guys a lot, but 
it's a big deal to fight a base. It's not not a small financial undertaking. So you know. Do you have anything else, Chris? Wendy, I, I had a couple of comments once the board comments are complete. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm okay, go so ahead, uh, One thing on the uh, uh, management plan, I just want to uh, kind of make sure everyone's aware that, you know, that, and, and Matt, I know we've talked about this before, um, the process to revise that is quite challenging. Uh, and it, that's something that I would love to see change in the management plan so that in the future it's not so challenging. But the reason uh, it's been unchanged since 2007, in my opinion, is because it's such a challenging and confusing process. Um, and so ideally the changes can make it more uh, clear what the process is. But the, if you read it and it's posted to the Mill Pond Committee uh, webpage, uh, but to change the management plan uh, has to be consistent with the CR, so that's fine. But it says the management plan may be amended as needed by a two-thirds vote of the Board of Selectmen, Mill Pond Committee, the Parks and Rec Commission, the Conservation Commission, all right, so far so good, and any other board committee group and or organization recognized by the grantor, which is the town, as charged with effectuating this management plan or the conservation restriction. Each board committee organization or group will have one vote. The grantee must approve any change, the grantee being Greenbelt, uh, Greenbelt must approve any change to the management plan before it goes into effect. So you can see that's like raises a lot of questions. Um, if you limit it to the four named, that's fine, but are there other groups or organizations that are charged with the you know, effectuating the implementation of the management plan, it you can see it's a big can of worms. So back in 2018, when I was brand new to the town uh, and talking to different groups, you know, I heard suggestions that management plan was an issue. And so I did start working on revisions and I had, was shopping them around to the various uh, committees and commissions uh, who are named there only to find out that that paragraph 16 had actually been uh, not properly amended uh, because the uh, the way it read was that uh, any change to that specific paragraph of the management plan also needed a town meeting vote. And I checked all of the records and worked with Mike McCarran. Town meeting had never voted that. So the language people had been re relying on as the effective language uh, actually was not legally in effect. And so you may remember we brought that to town meeting in the spring of 2019. It was the same year that the override passed. So it was the, you know, 900 voters in uh, at Pentucket. But that was just a housekeeping thing to change paragraph 16 to match what everyone thought it already said. Uh, and because legally what was still in effect was what was, you know, approved back in 2000 or 2001 which actually needed a town meeting vote to change the management plan. And the only reason I learned about that initially was I had reached out to Dave Rimmer to tell him, you know, to talk about some of the changes that were that were being considered. And he said, what do you mean 2007? The one I have is from 2001. And that's when we found out the 2007 management plan had never actually been filed with Greenbelt. And that's when we started looking and it had never gone to town meeting. So anyway, that ended up taking probably I don't know, 150 or 200 hours of time just to get back to where people thought they were. Um, yeah, it's never, yeah. Yeah, but in the course of doing that, I also, you know, it also became clear that changing any comma in that document was going to need like a real process. And I, I started to describe it as shuttle diplomacy, where kind of as the guy in the middle trying to make this happen, I was having to go to four, at least four different entities. And it just became completely unworkable. And so it never went anywhere. And then it's just never been on the priority list since. So I just would caution that in order to do that, and we've talked about this before, uh, each of those groups needs to be fully engaged in the process. And that means it's got to be a, a priority. Um, so that that's right. what I'm um, I'll just make sure I understand what you're saying. I I grasp that they would we'd have to go through this this gauntlet to get it approved, but the 
the work done to lay it out and get something to propose would be done by us, right? Well, I think who it doesn't uh, specify who can initiate it. You know, I think anyone can initiate a change, but to actually get it through the process is going to be a major effort. Okay. Everybody has to approve whatever. No, I, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's other other processes where it kind of feels that way um, when it comes to this. You know, especially you know, ever since we got Green Delta Fall when we did the dredging, it's been you kind of have to get a few more goes. But I mean. I would like, I mean, even if we go through it and we mark it up and we we come to some ideas that maybe could better it, I think it might be worth at least taking it that far and then working with, you know, obviously we have Wendy as our liaison and uh, Michelle and you, Angus, to just see, you know, I mean, if it's just a markup and a review of what we got, so be it, but I'd like to take it as far as we can. I totally agree. I mean, I started on it myself because it seemed like it was worth doing. I just, I ran, I felt like I ran into a brick wall, but, uh, but a lot of it was just more of getting people to respond or what, like, obviously we, we didn't get to a vote or anything, right? No, no, it didn't. It, it went to, you know, I, I can, I can share kind of, I mean, that's beyond the scope of tonight, but I can, I could circulate some of what or, or what was being considered and some of the comments and and what happened was it got you know i was looking at this as something we could just kind of get done because it was just going to be clear housekeeping stuff and it just became clear that some things that i viewed as a new person in town as fairly straightforward were actually quite hotly contested and it became clear that you know getting resolution of some of these things was going to take a major effort and at the time you know, I was heading into my first budget cycle and it just was absolutely infeasible to continue with it. And um, so it's, you know, and I think, you know, Chris's point about dogs, I mean, that may, people may want to try to resolve that. You know, it's it's just going to be a big effort. That's all. I and that's also going to fall to the select board because of that language about any other, you know, board, committee, commit group or organization you're going to need to decide are you recognizing open space committee for instance as having standing in these amendments if so that's another body to build consensus with if not you will probably have to deal with some fallout because you're not recognizing them same with uh I mean, you were writing a driving club for instance yeah so, so Matt, what do you, when you said there might be a historical reference i'm just saying that i when i listen obviously i'm not the most senior member of my committee, but I feel like I've listened in the talks and there has been a point where we've had to get Sam approved in a linear fashion where they've had to make sure that all organizations that apply have signed on. So I don't want to speak out of turn and I'm not sure of this, but it's worth asking and looking into to see if there's a reference to what was considered last time, the the, the list that needs to, needs to approve this. Well, I think as a starting point, if that's, Part of your objective, the Milton Committee, if that makes sense to mark up what you'd like to see changed, and then we can kind of figure out where to go from there and yeah. and what priority that has and all the other things that we're we're trying to work on right now. So that sounds good. Um, I guess, did you have any other questions? Or yeah, comments? the other comment I was just going to make was was on the trails, obviously, with the uh, uh, pending acquisition of Sawmill Brook, uh, which is a you know a terrific expansion of that. Uh, you know, the pipe safe mill pond property, as well as the, uh, you know, hoped for pedestrian connection to Deer Run and the pedestrian easement that, that was set up there by the planning board. Uh, you know, that's going to be great to build that uh, larger trail network. Uh, but I just want to make the point that it it's, you know, that's a real process. Uh, I know, you know, Michelle has raised uh, concerns to me about uh the time it's going to take to get the wetland crossing engineered and permitted and right now there's no resources for that that's not in any budget and so um she mentioned that there was a comment made maybe at the recent meeting that people hope that connection would be in place next summer so i just want to take this opportunity to say like that's not in any way realistic uh because there need to be funding appropriated to 
design that trail, get it permitted, get it built. Uh, so while maybe two seasons out might be might be possible if people really hustle. Is that from? Is that from it's not going to happen next time. Our board meeting. That that someone said that we would have it done in two years. It, no, next summer, <laughs> next this coming summer, that there oh, would no. be a trail there. No, and, no, no, I think Angus, what what Matt asked was was that from the Mill no, Pond Committee or was that from somewhere Probably else? not. No, because Michelle okay, was at Mill yeah, Pond Committee last week. She was at Open Space Committee. Uh, Wendy, I don't know you. I think you were at Open Space. Was that said that night? I, I don't recall. Okay. Uh, but it's so shocking to me. That I think I think we're waiting for timelines on a lot of this yeah. too. I think we're just like everyone else. We obviously put in as you know, it's something we're, we're looking to pick. We're, we're really waiting to find out what our role would be. Mm -hmm. And and we, we're so appreciative of the property, I think most members of Mill Pond, that we just want to know what we can do to help and not, you know. But beyond that, I, I think we're really, obviously not looking to, <laughs> to create a, a timeline of when the trails will be made or things like that. It's more of a, hey, if there needs to be help or, you you know, we need to help, you know, get other organizations that we work with going on blazing a part of the trail or something just to be there and available for it as soon as we can. But, yes. <laughs> Wendy, you and I have <laughs> talked about, you know, maybe the value of convening a meeting with with Matt and, uh, you know, chair of Open Space, chair of ConCom, maybe, you know, chair of Park and Rec since Park and Rec is included in the management plan i'm not sure but you know it does seem like some kind of uh you know sh uh shared setting of priorities would be really helpful because um you know obviously the town can't do everything all at once yeah what do you think about that matt Have yeah you know, that, that's been maybe? something that's been i think uh i think it's been talked about it should be we, we just yeah needs to be top of the list and we just gotta make a date <laughs> yeah well, when we get together for the, the trails meeting next week, maybe we could, you know, yeah. set something up yeah. then for yeah. spring or something. Yeah. yeah. That sounds great. Okay. Great. Well, thank you for uh, attending, Matt. Appreciate thank it. You. Appreciate it. Yeah, good meeting, Matt. Thanks on you guys. Sounds like. Um, lots of lot, good stuff. Lot, lot, yeah, yeah, lots of good stuff. No, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Have See you later. Have a good night. Activity. All right, so the next item on here was the River Road Resilience, Resiliency Planning. Do you want to just give a quick overview of the drone thing? I know it's in the, the packet, but... Sure. Um, so uh, this coming Wednesday, uh, beginning at 11 o'clock um, in the morning, roughly, um, uh, there will be a uh, sort of a drone survey of the the river bank all the way along the length of river road um starting at the on the far east end where um, there's a small parking area uh, by the river bend trail and uh the, the first launch of the the drone will be um from somewhere in that area and uh then over the course of the morning uh and early afternoon the original plan was to meet at the place that you see designated right there, but the plan was kind of revised as of today, having somebody having done some ground survey, um, that now instead of uh, going to the, all the points shown on the map there, we'll start out at the farthest point on the right-hand side, um, uh, the farthest to the right yellow marker, um, and, and then the drone pilots will walk along river road deciding where to launch the drone from again for to survey other areas um, and then it will culminate at the end by going over to the other side of the river in merrimack i can't remember the name of the park but there's a small park i think it's in the merrimack port area where um, again looking at the picture that's up on the screen currently um, you can see a fairly broad swath of west newbury shoreline and and uh the launch from there and cover that section um, from controlling the, the drone from the other side of the river. So it actually, I think, is going to be kind of entertaining. Mm -hmm. um, you know, wa watching the zone, the zone, right? Watching the drone uh, uh, zoom around. That was a zone. And, 
<laughs> that's how I got there. Um, so then the footage yeah. will be part of the um, the deliverable on this project. Uh, yeah, I, 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 you know that's interesting. We haven't talked about how much. I'm sure some of the footage will be will be deliverable. Okay. Yeah. Some of the shots, at least. Um, you know, if it's footage, video, we'll have to figure out where that would be hosted because there's probably a lot of data there, um, and and uh, would require a fair amount of storage. But um, you know, they're going to use it for. GEI will be using it to understand existing conditions and to give them a better idea of where they need to pay the most attention um, when they are on the ground. Very cool. Yeah, so that'll be that'll be an interesting activity Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday, beginning at eleven, going until probably two o'clock or so in the afternoon at the latest. All right. Next item is the Green Communities Annual Report. I, if I could just add one thing briefly, Wendy, to that. Uh, earlier on Wednesday morning, the uh, a couple of the engineers will be out uh, beginning their survey, their field survey of culverts on River Road and Coffin Street. Uh, they're going to meet uh, starting around 8 o'clock um, at the Ferry Park, and uh, Butch is going to be part of that. So I just wanted to make that up. Okay, great. So as part of this project or as part of yeah, the... as part of this project. Yeah. Yeah, they decided that they, you know, deploy everybody one day and, and that way they can hopefully um you know there'll be some exchange, I'm sure, between people on the GI team as they're doing it. So everybody understands what each other is doing and, and you know do the most thorough job possible. That's good. They'll probably have to do another day on the ground. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, by doing the first day like this, they, they, you know, hopefully it all works well together. Cool. Okay, next item, um, Green Communities Report. Have you seen this before, Chris? I think it's Yeah, what do you think? A lot there. That was Rick's life last week, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, this, I mean, it's, you know, this shows part of what's part of the content. Um, you know, there was a fair amount of uh, just information that had to be pulled together and, and entered. Um, I'll, I'll just note that I think what you're looking at right now, Wendy, the, they're referred to as the ECM, you know, for energy conservation measures. Mm -hmm. That's the one part that I did not update. And, you know, and we uh, uh, made the disclaimer when we when the report was submitted. And um, I, there's, I'm not sure how that was put together. They, the Green Communities Program moved to a new format this year. It used to be done in the spreadsheet, and now it's uh, an online uh, application as part of the Mass Energy Insight um, database, and which is great. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that it seems like they pulled a bunch of information together and things don't all make sense. Uh, there's redundancy, timelines are mixed up, yeah. uh -huh. and current status of projects is not correct. And you know, quite honestly, there's probably at least six or eight hours of work to get that all straightened out and, and to delete some of the items that are redundant and to just to update the ones that aren't. Um, but aside from that, you know, so the report was submitted and move on. <laughs> so I, I was curious about the top five buildings, the Garden Street Fire Station. I mean, I guess, you know. Yeah, yeah. That, so that's the energy intensity. I right. So um, in terms of total, it's not that it's high, tiny, but yeah, but, but it's not. Like, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Um, and I think it's probably not well insulated, and it's probably burning. I think it's burning oil, mm -hmm. and and uh, it's you know, um, uh, it's not a great building from an energy use standpoint. It's also pretty small, and and there are other buildings that we should look at. Yeah, um, significant efforts on before that. Mm -hmm. Did you have your agreement? Okay. So sometime tying in with us sometime in the next couple of meetings, you know, I'll I plan to get something in writing to propose that we do an energy audit of, of key buildings here with with somebody who's qualified to do it and and um uh, sort of proposal of how we bring those buildings, um, how what we have to do to get those buildings to be um, basically a net zero greenhouse gas, you know, for the buildings. I mean, that's a, that should be our goal for, um, you know, the statewide. The goal is 2050. 
Um, in reality, it should have been done 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah. you know, and, and the sooner we do it, we sh you know, we should, in my opinion, we should wait. Uh, and I understand there are a lot of the things we have committed to so have to figure out, you know, first we come up with a plan and we figure out how we integrate it into um, everything else that the town is working on without causing disruption, but still moving, moving things forward. Mm -hmm. Um, Angus, if we move on to action items, do you object to having Brian go first? Would no, we... I was going to suggest that. I oh. the camera just picked up; he was there, and I'd hate for him to, yeah, you know, to sit through the uh, other one. All right. Okay. So, um... and actually, Brian, if I could just preface so, uh, so the board, uh, you guys are aware that when this uh, came forward initially for town meeting funding. Uh, the the basis for it was a memo that Wayne had written at the time that included this and several other projects, and uh, he had carried just uh, twenty seven five to replace the roof. And uh, I he had been making assumptions about what could be done in house. And so, you know, when Brian, um, you know, was promoted into his current role, we started working on each of the projects that were kind of under his auspices and. Um, it became clear. He looked at this and he said, this is, I mean, he'll speak for himself, but he, this is a bigger job than can realistically be done. Um, so at this point, I'll turn it over to him. I just want to let the board know that basically this is uh, partly partly the passage of time, but more that when this was initially proposed, it sounds like, uh, you know, assumptions were made by the former director in terms of what was realistic that, that weren't, in fact, realistic. Yeah, I remember Wayne saying, oh, Brian can do it. Yeah. He's a workaholic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which which I think we can all take as a huge vote of confidence in Brian. Yeah, that's you know, a, Brian, a, I think that's how you need to take it. It's a big, uh, rounded roof building, and it's kind of uncommon for roofers to do that. So uh, uh, that's why the price per square is a little bit more. You know, there's a lot of things that are in, involved in that. There's some wires that go by, uh, just the steepness of the project. Uh, but the good thing is there's one layer on that roof. And uh, uh, what we're what we're trying to do is strip that layer off and replace it. Uh, that that's gone through its life expectancy. It's over twenty years old, and uh, basically strip that layer off, uh, dispose of the materials, and put another layer of uh, new asphalt um, architectural thirty-year shingles on that with the proper underlayment. Uh, I've been uh, up and down that roof several times, replacing shingles up at the top of the back. Most of the stuff is blowing off the backside, you know, where the solar farm is. The wind comes up that hill there and blows a lot of the shingles off, and then we get some leaks. Um, but uh, the uh, roof sheathing itself, the frame, the plywood that's underneath there is in good shape. Okay. So uh, I think it's, this is the time to do it if we're going to move forward on the project. And like Angus was saying, we thought we were going to be able to do that in-house. Uh, it wasn't my thought, really, but uh, um, so it's like 82 square there, uh, square being 10 by 10. So um, it's it's pretty good size, uh, but it, it's basically straight roofing. There's no valleys or any uh, things protruding up through the roof, so it should go pretty quickly. Uh, we got a couple budget quotes, and uh, I think they were and so we're looking, and it was partially funded before 27.5, so uh, total. Uh, looking for eighty-five thousand. So the two quotes, one was sixty. Right? Yes. So where's the eighty-five come from? Well, it just in case this, uh, you know, I don't know for sure on that rounded part on the other side if uh, we're going to run into any framing issues, mm -hmm. and those can end up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, we really can't be short. Yeah. Um, so if we in uh, some of these construction problems, sometimes you run into something that you can't just visually see in the project mm -hmm. and uh so i just would want to avoid budgeting you know more than we need and having the contractor spend right up to what was budgeted no, no you know what I mean? that's not the case i mean yeah. we're not gonna uh you know it's not here uh, you go here's your yeah five. right no no it doesn't work that way they put, i think at this point we'll, we'll end up giving three bids and taking the lowest one and uh let it go with that unless there was something else that we were going to do in-house on the building like uh, further than whatever the quote was, and then we could use that money to do that. But I've already replaced the trim on the uh, on the on the sides that rounded a few years ago. We put some plastic stuff up there, and the final siding was pretty good. 
Um, and I did the gutter in the front with uh, uh, the water pond and parks. So there shouldn't be any, other than it being some rotted areas underneath the shingles that uh, we, we don't see, uh, you know, and that can be quite costly. If they're gonna rip a lot of that up and replace uh, damaged wood underneath there, that can be a kind of cost, you know, just because of the cost of materials and no the minimum wage and things like that. Do you have in the attic or, you know, the, whatever the upper most layer level is, uh, is called, uh, and can you see the, the rafters and nothing? nothing yeah, left? up in the, uh, where the gymnasium is up there. I don't know if you've ever been You know, I've never been upstairs. Yeah. 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 It's pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you ever get a chance, you should take over right up there, just because it's kind of a cool little area. But you can see the whole rafters that they have there. Yeah. yeah. And they seem to be in good shape. Okay. So, I mean, if, if that was an issue, then we'd probably have to think about uh, doing some really remodeling there. But those are in good shape, you know, uh, but there are leaks up there. And we've been fixing them, but as soon as we fix them, the next big rainstorm, those uh, shingles are blowing off and causing another leak. Okay. So, uh, and then, you know, I don't patrol that building every every time it rains out, so I kind of wait for the water department to say, you know, put this a leak, so I bring it there and fix it. Yeah. So, so were they were the shingles last time not applied adequately? You think? Uh, no, they're they, just. They know one of these, you know, refer to hurricane nailing. So, yeah. but, you know. Yeah, hurricane nail just puts a lot of extra nails yeah, in exactly, it. Exactly, more nails. Yeah, the, I mean, yeah, it's kind of tough, but yeah. that's selling the hurricane nail. So I think yeah. the uh, the underlayment uh, is different now than it was in the past. Usually they use like a felt paper in the past. Yeah, you use and ice then, and water shield now. Yeah, now, well, we'll probably won't ice and water shield the whole entire thing, but they have like a synthetic roof paper that goes underneath, sort of like Tyvek, if you're familiar with that. Okay. It doesn't rip. Uh, when it's exposed to the weather, it still remains uh, intact, so that it'll be able to, you know, uh, repel some water if some of the shingles blow up. But uh, the architectural shingle is a heavier shingle now. Yeah. What's on it now is like a three tab shingle. So the tabs, uh, once they get older, become weaker and they start to blow in the wind, and then you get the tabs blowing off, mm -hmm. and then one tab leads to another tab. So then you'll get a, uh, a hole in the roof so that it's sort of a leak. But uh, <clears throat> I mean, that. That roof has lasted its expectancy, and yeah. it was put on correctly. Yeah, and I'm, I'm thinking that uh, we really can't do any. You know, ultimately, a metal roof is a better roof, but with the boat section, we really can't get into that. Yeah, you know, it's going to be yeah, really pricey. Yeah. yeah. So, Brian, I, I noticed on one of the quotes, the one from uh, Metals Construction, it says, um, "Not a prevailing wage job." Is that? Um, can, does this have to be? Yeah, it definitely is. They know that. I don't know why that's okay. Right. Or, well, I, yeah, I just want to make sure they're costed yeah. because it does on the proposal notes, it says not prevailing wage. Yeah, no, it, it, it is going to be one. Okay. What's the long term plan? Both, uh, those are basically budget quotes to get us started. Okay. So uh, they know when they have to put their, what they're quoting and we'll look at the, uh, get it written up. Okay. And they'll, they'll, and they'll know the criteria. I'm sorry. What's the long term plan for this building? Right. Good question. So, uh, you know, I, I know the water, the, uh, once we get the roof done, uh, I think the water department is going to, that's their home. And then we have, uh, on the back side, we have like a lean to situation that the highway department uses for like a cold storage for a lot of their equipment. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, if you look at the front of that, there's several, uh, garage bays. And, uh, there's talk that I might be moving there and use that as like the workshop that I work out of. Uh, so, uh, but we haven't nailed that down yet. We're still working on the HVAC stuff and trying to figure out what we're going to do for heat in there and uh, work through that. We have a couple of proposals on what we were going to do earlier, uh, but we were. I was. I was trying to get another sector of the building that was <clears throat> kind of fitted my needs a little bit more. But <clears throat> the highway department is currently using that now, so uh, I would take one of the one of the bays and set up in there um, and try to make that work and. Um, and see if that would be big enough for me to work as a, you know, to do some of the shop work that I have to do woodworking and so forth. So this building is part of a long-term plan. For yeah, the PW I think so. Okay, I just want yeah, to it's, it's 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 kind of like a bomb shelter. It's all brick, mm -hmm. uh, and the roof. You're gonna start with the roof, no matter when you're gonna keep it in, you know, or in, in in style with the project. You know, obviously, you don't want the roof leaking because it's you know, it's just all downhill from there. So we gotta stabilize the roof, and then you know, the, uh, we ultimately you can do whatever you want with the building after we stabilize the roof and figure out what we're gonna do for the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Brian mentioned uh, that you've looked at a couple of things for HVAC. So what what um what thoughts 
Well, what we were thinking of is more like a heat pump, uh, a split system, yeah. and uh, get some air conditioning in there. Um, but uh, that was in the, uh, I think uh, the DPW was, uh, for lack of a better term, looking to move me out of one of their bays in the uh, at the, uh, the, the whole modern DPW yeah. garage. It's gonna take up a lot of room with my tools. And then <clears throat> what happens is I take over one of the bays, I start a project, and then if a truck breaks, then uh, I gotta move all my stuff out of there. They're gonna, you know, they're gonna use their, their bay pack. And I, it ends up uh, just logistically doesn't work that well. So I was hoping to uh, get the lean to section, but <clears throat> I didn't realize they just have a lot of equipment out there and uh, you know, should be inside. So uh, to uh, so that the equipment doesn't get ruined outside. And um, when you say it should be inside, you mean the unheated lean to? Yeah, it it it, sh it should be in a better space. In the no, no, no that's, that's a good. Just, that's as good. As long as it has a hat over its head, it's okay. Right. I was hoping to get that long section of that lean to and turn that into my little area for the garage and workshop and put my truck in there and all that and kind of. Um, Look at with this space that they had in the new DPW garage and work around that. They have to talk to the butch. It's just not an option. And one can't, he can't fit all that equipment back in the other garage. So he needs the space. And uh, that would put me up in one of those other bays, but they're a lot smaller. And uh, I'm just trying to figure out how we're going to work that and make that work. Uh, and it would be an additional. So right now, the water department has a Modine oil fired. Uh, heater that does their heating there with no AC. So uh, if I was to take over a section over there, then uh, the section that I would take over would end up with a new um, split unit that this would do that one bay that I would be working in that would have heat uh, put and supply that area. So if if you are considering changes <clears throat> like that, I mean, a proposal change like that, we should look at whether or not there are, there might be green community grants available to help with that. Yes. Yeah. Once yeah. <laughs> so we finalize what we're going to do, if I'm going to end up uh, in that situation, then we will definitely take advantage of it. So, why um, would you propose using ARPA funds for this versus just an article at a town meeting? I'm uh, sorry. Why are you proposing using ARPA funds for this versus just coming to a town meeting asking for money? Well, I mean, the process was already started, so I think uh, um, uh, this is what we suggested. You know, we'll, we can go either way. Yeah, yeah. I, Wendy, I had suggested bringing it forward uh, because I don't see why it wouldn't be brought forward, not to say it would be funded, but I think it's important to keep the board apprised and and where this is something that the town had previously appropriated funding intending that the 27.5 that was appropriated was sufficient once we became aware it wasn't sufficient to approve you know to to complete what was approved it made sense to bring that forward and say this is the gap uh you know arpa is certainly eligible if the board doesn't choose to use that that's fine it can go to the spring town meeting uh, obviously, that would mean it couldn't be put out to bid till after that, but that's no problem. Um, you know, there's okay. not there's not a huge uh, ticking clock. But I had I had uh, suggested that it be brought forward. Okay, Chris, you've been quiet. Do you have any questions or? I couldn't get a word in edgewise. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> the floor is yours. No, you hit most of them. Um, so I think if the building is intended to be long term, you ought, you ought to. This is a big number, bigger than we expected. So I think at some point somebody's going to step back and take an overall look at the entire building, what that's going to cost, and have a systematic planning go forward. <clears throat> but that's another issue altogether. Um, relative to the roof, the number's very high at about 11, 12 bucks a square foot. You know that. But you've got $25,000 in contingency there, which is also rather excessive um you got a little bit of sixty thousand so twenty five thousand to cover any sheathing is, is probably more than it's needed and i understand you want to be cautious but then i think the bid is slow to your number a lot of times you know that yeah so um i guess whatever number we end up at i hope you put it up get four or five bids because i had two projects on my house one of them the number was almost 80 grand. I ended up getting it done for mid 20s. I mean, because you get the spectrum of bids who's busy, who needs to work. Sometimes they care, sometimes they don't. It seems like every time I, like I had a septic system, and the first bid came in, 
and almost had a heart attack. And I got three other bids, and one of them was like half of the original bid. So you never know. It depends. It's like I, I used to do estimating, um, and it's not always what a project is worth. It's not the labor and the materials. It's what the company needs at that time. I mean, sometimes like the market is really good now. They can they get the end of the job and I'm gonna throw 50% on and see if they buy. Right. You might not have other bids. And then you could go to the other guy, he goes, he's in between projects. One project slid, he's got a month available, and he can give you a competitive number. So I would like, you know, suggest you go out to three or four or five bidders and, and because the number's grown significantly. That's the first thing. Second comment, um, you said you're looking at 30 year shingles. What about 40s? That when I built my house, I did 40s because it was marginally more expensive, but not to have to replace the roof every 20 years is real nice. Yeah, it, it, it's, there's a lot of studies out. So the 40 year shingles must be a little bit thicker. And, uh, you know, it just doesn't seem, and we can do that. But you're thinking all that for, right? It doesn't yeah. seem like they last any longer than the 30 year shingles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, my thirty years old looks brand new. Yeah, I guess. well, it, it all depends. Like, which where your building is? Is it, is it in the sun? Is it you know? Yeah. Gets well, but it's the wind zone right behind the soul. Right. You know, the, I put uh, fifty year shingles yeah. on the back of my house, and it's in the full shot, and I only got like twenty five years out of them. So depending on what, uh, okay. you know, and uh, I hand mailed them down and like did it, so I wouldn't have to get back up there again. Right? <laughs> so it looks like I know you're good at me. Yeah. yeah. So uh, a lot of times, uh, it de you know, it depends on the shingle manufacturer. We'll look into that. Most of the guys are using maybe a, a tube line or a, a a real quality shingle, and we'll we'll put that on the spec. But <clears throat> to your point, as far as getting close, we'll we'll do our due diligence to get the the right code. at the uh, you know, for instance, when we were painting the town hall. And you know, we started out. Uh, one guy bid ninety two thousand to paint it, and we <clears throat> we ended up taking the guy for forty five. Right, and that's so, exactly what you, right. So you got a yeah. you got somebody what seventy two? Yeah, the boat. You know, maybe the revenue comes in in thirty five. Right, no, we don't know. So we got to get these boats in there, but you know, uh, but you got a ballpark sixty. Well, I think I think the the cheapest bid we got on that one was sixty two, sixty five. I believe I don't have that. You got one right here, sixty thousand even. Yeah, sixty thousand. Okay, yeah. So that's it. And, you know, it's something, um, you know, who knows once you strip that roof off, you know, which is, which, and that's my concern. And, the, you know, I think that we can't be short on these things uh, as far as money goes. So, um, and I don't, I don't see looking at that building, I don't see uh, anything that uh, would, uh, would, would let us get up to the 85. Right. So, you know, unless the, all the sheathing was bad. So I'm going to suggest if we go with the arbor, if you guys are on board with that, we add 45, gives them the total number 72. I think it should come in well under that. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather estimate more tightly and I'll have them. That's what I would rather do too. Yeah. So then I'll make a look and we authorize $45,000 additional out of ARPA funds to replace the roof panel. Second. Right. Well, an forty-five, an additional forty-five, in addition to the original twenty-seven. So I, I'm curious where that leaves us um, in uncommitted ARPA funds. It's probably not prepared to answer that. Sure. Yeah, Jim. If you're able to pull up the uh, packet from the last meeting, there was a comprehensive report in that one. Uh, if you go to the I think it was the November 18th uh, yeah, meeting sure. packet. Yeah. There it is. That's the one. Can you zoom in on that? Yeah. Is that any better? It's an allocated bit of six fifty eight or what? what six, six, six or nine unallocated. Six or nine, okay. I don't know why it looked like fifty eight. <laughs> Can't really read it very well, but uh, okay. So it's six oh nine. Six oh nine is unallocated, so this would leave um uh five sixty 
four two. And what else are, is in the what else is in discussion right now for our funds? Well, if you scroll down, I mean it's it's really going to be up up to what you all want to fund, but the things that are on my radar are the two listed, one being the Coffin Street culverts and the other being the Middle Street Bridge. But, you know, later tonight, we're going to talk about the overall capital program. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a lot of projects. It's a matter of what do you want to pay it out of your left pocket or your right pocket. Yeah, I just, you know, I mean, you've heard me before. I'd like to keep as much buffer as we can so that in the event that we have to, I understand the Mill Street Bridge is a complicated discussion at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but if it gives us flexibility to move quickly and, you know, make a decision, um, I, 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 you know, yeah. I think 45 dollars is gonna Exactly. You know, I do I do think that it would be good to um, get the board out on site, not necessarily for this roofing. The roofing seems like something we ought to do one, you know, either way. Um not to not to try to, you know, sway your vote. That's not my intent in saying that, but the roofing seems like a basic kind of maintenance, as long as Wendy, like you said, that it is part of a, a long-term plan. This building, you know, I've, from my time through it a number of times, it it certainly is absolutely critical to both the water and the public works operations. And uh, we had met out there, uh, myself, Brian, Butch, and Caitlin. Uh, Brian, what was that, about three weeks ago? Yeah. Uh, and we had, you know, a really nice discussion. We walked all through the building. We walked through the, the current garage across the street. And we talked about a whole host of things. And I had suggested on site that day that, it would be good to get the board out there at some point. I haven't, you know, initiated that because, uh, you know, we've had been having a lot of meetings. Uh, but I think that, uh, you know, we'd like to get you guys out there looking at both locations because I think the what Brian kind of talked about earlier tonight is uh, it's really, you know, interesting set of choices ahead between the various functions the town's performing between highway facilities and water. And what's the best allocation of those spaces? And uh, we were just doing some brainstorming, and and uh, there were a couple of ideas that came up that, you know, bigger picture might make a lot of sense. Would be, you know, more costly. Uh, and so I had suggested uh, to the, you know, at that meeting that if we got the, you know, set up some kind of site visit. Um, you know, at some point, just to get you guys aware of what's really going on with the buildings, how heavily they're utilized, um, and, uh, you know, try to make some strategic decisions about, um, you know, how we want to allocate that space. Uh, there was a suggestion of possibly adding uh, an additional um, kind of a, I don't know how you describe it, Brian, but like uh, some outbuilding in on the uh, pipe safe side in order to relocate all of the uh, DPW plows and things across the road in order to allow uh, the facility side to have more space on the page school side of the road because uh, there's some operational issues with you know Butch getting the trucks across across the street to get the plows loaded on um, there's some things that I think you know you guys ought to understand about what's working and, and what could probably work better. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We'll get a move. All right, I'm good. Okay, Brian. Yep. Yeah. All right, so let's go back to the Water Department financial plan. And that is separate attachment at A. So um, discussing this with Angus or emailing with Angus, he went back to the original um, article and notes that submitting this to the finance committee is not part of the original article. This was an initiative by the town manager's office. 
So the way that it's referred to um, in the agenda is not accurate. Um, would you add anything to that, Angus? No, I would just say, I mean, I, I'm just trying to be pragmatic on um, trying to deliver something, if not by December 31st, which is what the town meeting article said by, you know, say 10 or 14 days after that, uh, I think is, you know, possible if I do it myself or with my, with a staff team and, you know, getting uh, input from the water department and so forth. I think if it's, uh, you know, the way the, um, you know, if it's referred to FinCom for them to kind of roll up their sleeves and dig into it, I just think that leads to meetings and overhead and really kind of a fair amount of diverted time. Um, so that was my uh, my thought. It's, it's a lot of work, but it's uh, what you see in front of you. This outline was two hours of work, no more. And so, you know, we can do a lot of work if we have un uninterrupted time. And this has <laughs> been in short supply. Um, but I mean, I, I would suggest tonight's focus should be on the substance of the outline and whether you think it's uh, fully responsive to what you hope, you know, that we're going to achieve uh, or if there's things that you would add or or, or subtract or question. And then I think if we have a good idea of where we're trying to arrive substantively, we can circle back at the end of tonight's discussion of how best to get there. Looks pretty complete to me. I mean, I don't see anything missing to either of you. Now, anything... my, my question is, where'd you come up with the pin column? Because that's the way I started. Was, I always understood Angus and the Water Commission. Um, I'm, this was just the you know the item that was listed in the agenda. Oh, okay. I guess did that come out of our meeting last week, Angus? Yeah, I mean, I think you know we are you know we're we're obviously aware you know of of Rob's interest in getting hands on and, and helping, and we appreciate that that intent that sentiment. Um, and so you know I hadn't written this outline yet. I didn't do this till Saturday. Uh, I'd been kind of percolating in my head for a while, but I didn't put pen to paper till Saturday. And, uh, you know, I had, we talked about, you know, I have a lot of the data that you see listed there in the section six is stuff that I've already been assembling over the five and a half years I've been here. You know, I started doing that in 2018 and just haven't really had a, a place to direct that information. Um, but a lot of that data exists uh, already. Uh, it's just a matter of kind of putting it together in a way that is cohesive and uh, and stands up well and makes sense. So I think we were thinking about, is there a way to take advantage of this offer of volunteer support? Because obviously, you know, there's no secret we have significant bandwidth issues. Uh, but the, I, in, in putting this together, I had gone back to the uh, initial FinCom booklet from last spring, which, as you'll recall, there was initially an anticipated motion that FinCom had really drafted. And then the actual motion ended up being somewhat different from that. And in the original motion, which wasn't voted on, it was written such that the, uh, you know, it, it'd be prepared under the oversight of the town manager's office, done by February, so by the end of January. And then FinCom would review it. And upon their finding that it's complete, they would then present it to the water commission, the select board and the town, meaning town meeting, uh, which I kind of liked that sequence because it allows me and my staff to really focus on, on delivering on what the voters have asked us to do, present it. And if the FinCom thinks it's complete, great, they can run with it. If they don't think it's complete or they have other questions, they could then add to it. But I'd like the opportunity to uh, take it as far as we can. And part of that's just the inefficiencies that come with committees and postings and minutes and the time that I spend preparing for a committee meeting rather than actually doing the work. I, I just don't want to add to that in the very limited time that we have between now and, you know, really ever, ever but certainly the next six or eight weeks, you know, leading up to presentation of the budget. Every hour is absolutely critical. Um, 
No, if you can do it, I think it's fantastic. And I, I think that process would actually work well. So I think it'd be great to send this outline to water or I'm sorry, I mean, to, to uh, FinCom and say, this is where we're aiming. If you, if you see something different, by all means, chip in. Uh, mm -hmm. But in terms of actually preparing a, a plan and, and writing things up, um, I would much rather just spend hours kind of working on that than going to meetings, honestly. Yeah. So that's, that's all, that's understandable. Um, any, if you had to guess, how much time do you think it'd take? Well, you know, it's, it's, uh, I mean, you know, this is two hours of work exactly that you're looking at. I started with a blank sheet of paper and just wrote this in two hours. So I can get a lot done in, in not a lot of time. The trick is finding that time during the work week, just cause it's so busy. And obviously the holidays coming up and, and, uh, you know, taking some vacation time. So I think that you know, if I was looking at this as a consultant in my old consulting days, I'd you know, you'd probably cost it out at a pretty good number. Um, but I think, in a pragmatic sense, in terms of how it's going to take as much time as as I have, <laughs> and and I think now that I have a good outline, you know, I can get Jenny involved, I can get other staff involved, uh, but. Uh, I think, you know, we'll get Hilltop involved with in, in terms of like projecting uh, future capital scenarios on borrowing terms, things like that. They can help us. You know, we have resources that can help us. Um, I think it's going to take as much time as we can find. Um, but I, I definitely feel, you know, optimistic after, you know, coming up with what I think is a good outline. Um, and it, it's just taken this long to do that. Um, not because it took so many hours, but because it took months and months to find a couple of dedicated hours that weren't, you know, where there wasn't something else that was even a high, higher priority. So Angus, I mean, in terms of actually completing this work, do you see like logical milestones along the way, or is this just kind of, you're gonna plow through until you're no, done? Yeah, there, there, I mean, you can kind of see in, in, you know, some of this is, is kind of like, it's important, but it's not determinative, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, for yeah. instance, like there's new unfunded mandates. That's that's great to document because when the time comes for a broader audience to read that, it's important to understand this lead and copper and, and the effect that's having on the department. But that's not like critical path stuff. The critical path stuff, I think, is the really going to get into the policy options and recommendations and and basically having a model of basically your average water uh, rate payer, what their cost burden is, how that compares to other towns similar to us, and how that would be expected to change going forward once the church and prospect is layered on and once future things are layered on beyond that. You know, tying into our earlier discussion, it becomes really important of whether those uh, water main replacement priorities that the water department's provided over the years can be relied upon. Obviously, for purposes of this report, I'll be relying on those um, as, as being, you know, actual future project. I think they are. Uh, I just think Tate and Howard, you know, missed them, but I think they are real projects. So, you know, and basically to try to frame the policy question of, you know, is there a, a breaking point at which the, the cost burden for the water ratepayer is too high? That becomes a policy question. And I think some of the policy options, um, I mean, the idea of, you know, potential uh, effects on, on regional collaboration and operating or capital costs, that's something that could become quite, you know, dicey. But I think we need to look at all the options and, and frame them. Yeah. So um, what would you think about also as a courtesy, just sharing this with the Board of Water Commissioners? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, I definitely would, because I, I need their, you know, and if they have suggestions, I would I would like input from all parties. The benefit mm -hmm. from something that's staff driven is we, we can get that input and have those conversations without posting meetings and taking minutes and all of that overhead. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice if the Board of Water Commissioners, and obviously we can't, you know, we could ask them, but 
they can do it as you know they see appropriate. But it would be great if somebody from the water board of water commissioners could be appointed as sort of the um, you know the the interface for you. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to. You know, I'd be very welcoming of having some working meetings with with individuals attending. Uh, once people get appointed, it does trigger, you know, that then becomes a public body, as we yeah. saw that. that even Kentucky if it's just one person, even if it's just you and one person from the Board of Water Commissioners? Uh, I don't think that, but but yeah. if, if Water Commission designated someone and Water and uh, FinCom designated someone, I mean, I would look to Jim, but, but yeah. there is a point at which if a public body designates a subcommittee, it is a public body. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would rather see Angus and staff work on this, and you know, rather than formally have committee members. I just think it's going to bog things down. I mean, I'll definitely shop it around. You know, I wanted to obviously get your input first, and you know, I didn't have anything to share until until Saturday. So now you have it, and it, it you know, I felt pretty good about it. Uh, sounds like you guys think it's in good shape. If you have markups or things you want to send me, by all means, please do. Uh, but yeah, I would send it to FinCom, let them know, going to be working on, you know, working on this, uh, send it to Water Commission. Obviously, I'll meet with Mark, go through it with him. And I think, you know, people will send input and that's great. I want to, I want to get as much uh, as I can on the, you know, fairly short timeline we have. Yeah, I think it looks great. It's pretty impressive that you did this in two hours. <laughs> I just have to say. Well, I've been working here five and a half years. You know, the wheels are turning. I just, yeah. you know. <laughs> I can't, you know, it's not until you kind of sit yeah. and put things on paper that they, but yeah, I, I was, it's funny when I sent it out, I looked at the prior email and it was just like two hours and four minutes previously. And I was like, oh, wow. that, And literally I started with a blank sheet of paper. So I was, I felt pretty good that that was, yeah, but a lot, lot of it's in, my, it's in my head. So there's a lot there for two hours. You know, I was pulling my files but yeah no start to finish two hours so very good all right uh so our next item is c uh select board fy25 budget policy direction this took like an hour <laughs> what's that this, this took an hour. an hour not even that's because <laughs> 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 Um, so what's in the packet is not the amended one, right? She's moving it Right. Yeah. It is online. If uh, the one that Jim uh, Jim oh, answered, that that, yeah. that one is is on the online packet. Yeah. Any comments or? So are you familiar with this this part of the budgeting process? Well, we're seeing what you've done before. Yeah. Okay. The, how do you get there? No. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, we worked up last year and see what's Not changed. Right. Yeah. Right. The only thing I'm COVID stuff out. Was curious about if there should be any discussion of just what we just talked about the whole upgrading of the water infrastructure. And uh, there's going to be a lot of focus on how that gets funded. And, um, the, the town eventually, at some point, is going to become more participant than just the water users. So it wasn't really addressed in here. I didn't know if it should be more specifically. That well, actually seems, seems to me like a pretty good point because it, you know, going forward, this as a, as a category, maybe the single largest category. But in terms of budgeting for our annual operating yeah. budget, that's not really, you know, that's more capital kind of stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. But I, you know, it just seemed like the only thing that was missing to me, I guess. Yeah. I, I did have a question because it does talk you about ARPA funds again at one point. When do those expire was a question. They have to be fully committed by the end of calendar year 2024. And they have to be fully expended by the end of calendar year 2026. But we got we still have plenty of time. I just don't want to get in trouble with it. Yeah, I mean, and in, in, in a pinch, you know, if we're bearing down on the end of capital of calendar year 2024, I'm sure that there are things in our capital budget that we could apply them to. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about vehicles and yeah. you know, one home. 
I guess um, one thing that I was wondering about adding here um, or addressing is um, step increases for employees. Um, you know, it's been the assumption based after the wage study that it would be performance based. Mm -hmm. so I don't know if it's appropriate to either say that as a goal or to have a specific amount that we think should be spent on step increases. And what's your thought on that? Uh, I think it's a great suggestion. Um, my, uh, I wouldn't probably get into an amount, but I, I think that having something to say, uh, you know, setting out a clear process by which uh, department heads or other budget preparers can propose, uh, you know, changes to wages other than COLA, um, you know, based on a, you know, defined process you know, taking into account performance, et cetera, is you know, something like that. My my only hesitation is that, you know, I'm so far behind on getting that eval process kind of sent around and defined. Um, as you know, it just week after week, it, we work on it, but we get pushed aside. And so it's, uh, I mean, that's on my list for later this week. The problem is like the next, three days are like meetings. Like I'm in meetings the next mm -hmm. three days. So any work I'm going to get done is like a few minutes here or there or late at night. Um, so it's very hard. That's been the case for the last three weeks. And it's the case this week too. I'd like to get that. I mean, you know, the progress we made, you know, we've made a lot of progress on it, but that's different than having something that's ready to be sent around to everybody, including the exceptions because it's the 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 normal ones are all one thing but then you get into the exceptions you know those that are appointed by a board and who's going to conduct those evals and who's going to be present for them and how do you make sure it's all everyone's you know grading on the same curve um it's 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 an enormous thing to take on um yeah so i mean absent some kind of statement how would you handle step increases well, I guess I'd rather send it out and then, uh, I mean, I'm not looking to this, you know, the timeline that I circulated is to send out the budget packet a week from today. Mm -hmm. And the budget packet is what provides the overall direction. And that's, you know, maybe in the past, sometimes I maybe have sent this around in advance, but generally the budget package is what includes the policy direction. So if I'm able to get that done, later this week, which I'm aiming to do, then having some accompanying language in here makes a lot of sense. My only concern would be is if that language gets in here and then because of whatever may happen between now and next Monday, if I'm still behind, I mean, I've been trying to get this done for months. You know that yeah. and every single week I come in with the best of intentions. Sometimes I'll spend Monday morning hours on it Monday morning and then Friday night, like nothing more is done because of everything that goes on around here. Yeah, I get my I'm not, you know, questioning your progress. I'm, my concern is that people are going to look at this budgeting cycle as a means to boost employees in their department who weren't happy with their step assignment. So I just if there's a direction from the board that's needed to kind of preempt that, I'm, that's what I was looking to provide. Yeah, no, I think I think you're right. I like I think the spirit of what you're offering is is excellent and I think it will I think this is the time to do it. So yeah, why don't we uh, plan to put in a bullet point on that um, if you want to take a crack at, at some language. I mean, it's nothing we haven't been talking about for over a year, so yeah. it's not, it's not, um, and, and I've certainly presented it verbally to department heads. I've, you know, that any increase other than COLA is going to need to be preceded by performance evals, which will all need to take place on a, on a comparable time frame and in a comparable format it's just a matter of rolling that all out and we are close i mean we've, we've made a lot of progress you know prior to thanksgiving uh i don't think anything really happened last week um uh, because of other stuff um but we have made a lot of progress and i think chris's suggestion on on water is good too i i 100 agree wendy with what you said that it doesn't bear any relevance to FY25 operating budget. 
but I'm looking at the language we've got in here that item four on, uh, you know, Whittier and Pentucket debt. And it may be that uh, we do a similar paragraph to that. Um, but, you know, that would talk about some kind of expectation that there'd be a post FY25 projection that could maybe, you know, account for if the town were to choose to take on some portion of water capital obligation, but that might be too soon because there's a lot to that. As with, as you know, it's not just the money side, it's the governance side and the, the lack of, you know, meaningful financial oversight that the town has on water. I mean, that's, that's, got to be tied to any discussion of potential funding. Mm -hmm. I like the ones that you added, the seven, eight, and nine. I think those are all things we've been discussing. So that's that's good. Um, Rick, did you have any comments or no, I think yeah. you nailed know, pretty much everything that's significant that's changing. In terms of additions, mm -hmm. there's really nothing that needs to be to be taken out. I mean, we're still doing the policy. Chris, do you have any other comments or questions? Uh, question: You don't have any percentage in there on the school uh, previously two and a half percent. Anticipating you're going to stick close to that. Item number one. Yeah, in 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 the non. Uh, education operating budget. Yeah, that's the the targets always either been two percent or two and a half percent. I don't have a good sense at this point um, in the process. Sometimes by this point we have some idea of whether some major cost drivers like uh, retirement assessment or health insurance. Uh, you know that we have reason to think that there's some outlier in terms of some real cost driver. At this point. We have not heard that. In fact, uh, you know, I mean, insurance isn't a huge driver, but we we actually were given a contractual, uh, like a fixed increase of, I think it was 2%. We we got some incentives from uh, Maya for our property casualty, pardon me, insurance, because our uh, claim ratio is so favorable. Uh, they were very, very pleased about that. And what I'm hearing on health insurance is all preliminary. They don't set those rates till till mid-February, but... I would suggest two and a half percent certainly wouldn't be in any more than that. It, it would always either be two or two and a half. And whatever target you set, I will do the best I can to reach it. But let's say you said two percent and I just couldn't do it. Then I would do what it says in that section, which is I would present it. Let's say I presented a budget to you at two point seven percent and you had said two and a half percent. I would say to get to two and a half, you'd need to cut you know, $210,000 from this budget or whatever. And then you could decide prior to referring the budget whether to make those cuts or not. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So so tonight at this point, do we, do we want to choose the target? Should yeah. Let's say not to exceed two and a half. It's still preliminary. You got a lot of stuff. Oh yeah. What else? Still? Um, Angus, you uh, you alluded to you heard something, but and then said, but they don't set rates until for health insurance. They don't set yeah, rates. we met with them a few weeks ago, um, yeah. and. I'd have to check my notes, but the number in my in my recollection, they always give us like very early in the process, like a, you know, conservative. But they said something like ten percent. Um, I certainly hope it wouldn't be anything like that. But that that's my recollection. Right, so for, for health insurance. On this? Wait, is this something we typically vote on, Angus? It is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we always put in the lower right, you'll see there's the approved by date. So the only, so I think the changes, so it sounds like two and a half percent. I totally agree with that. 
uh, we'll add something about uh, just to set out a clear process for any non COLA wage adjustments. And then uh, it sounded like the, the uh, sense was to not at this point put in anything on water. Yeah, I think I think next year it would be appropriate. Maybe it just is going to float the idea to people the less. Well, nobody's going to read this. <laughs> That's encouraging. Well, I mean, you're talking about the tax guys, <laughs> right? You're not talking about boards and committees. Well, and no, everybody's. Yeah. Uh, well, I think I'll leave that up to Angus's discretion. How's that? If, well, we have to if, vote on it, so we have to I'll say. Leave it up to Angus's is, discretion. If he's if he's writing in souls. If he's a place it would fit, it doesn't sound like he does. If you want to hold till next year, fine. Okay, let's hold it till next year. I think it makes sense to hold it. Okay. All right. So you want a vote on this now, correct? So that you can get your. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So make a motion to approve it uh, as we just discussed, adding a two and a half percent and uh, provision for the cost of living, et cetera. Second. All in favor? Okay, I, I do know where. Uh, you know, I read through this a couple times earlier today, but um, I don't recall where it is. In, in the past, I thought we had reference to the um, school stabilization fund and how we would. Uh, yeah, that's in there. Oh, is that up at the time? Right, yeah, right, right. Not number three. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of like mealy yeah. mouth, but it's there. Yeah. No. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. So the next item is G general discussion. So item A is we haven't heard any response on the Whittier Tech letter other than the Mayor of Newbury report. That was a great letter. So. There's actually been a lot of chatter both late last week and and today up through this afternoon from different towns on who's signing the Mayor Gove letter, who's going their own way. And uh, it seems like, you know, without going through the blow by blow, because, yeah, there are probably, you know, 15 emails on that. Uh, but many towns are, you know, going their own way in terms of writing their own letter. Um, and a couple of towns. Uh, like Merrimack, I think expressed they were generally generally in agreement with the mayor's letter, but chose not to sign on. Um, you know, I think Salisbury's writing their own letter. A number of them are writing their own letter. So if if you're interested in knowing which towns are doing what, I can definitely have uh, Rebecca put together a little synopsis tomorrow and send that around. Yeah, I'd be interested in, in but, seeing. And we did get, you know, we did get something uh, back from Steve Crane last week in Ipswich. He's the administrator down there just saying uh, very well said. You know, he liked our letter. So there's been a lot of chatter. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, Mayor uh, Reardon has been, you know, he sent a couple of things to the to the group saying that he thinks there's momentum building for a pause in the process. I guess we'll find out. Okay. Um, FYI, in a paper today, I saw a story that said um, Merrimack had requested Maureen to go and give a presentation in. So she is doing that. It sounds like she's agreeable with towns make a specific request. Yeah, she's she scheduled to be there on Wednesday. Well, Salisbury it's all, it's all made a specific request to have a forum. Is that who was it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's a good idea. Right. All right. The next item is the capital improvement plan. Okay. So, oh. what I'll do, I, I'm going to, uh, if you can, yep. I don't know if I'm the host or how that's going to work. Um, but, Jim, if you can make me host. Okay, good. What I'll do is a screen share. What I'll do is just kind of walk you through where I am in the process. I've definitely made, you know, made a bunch of progress, had quite a bunch of meetings dating back from the summer and as recently as last week. And what I did is is made a bunch of updates and then I highlighted things that, that need some discussion. So uh, I'll walk you through what I have, uh, not in agonizing detail, but, you know, in general. And then uh, we can talk about a process from here. I do think that 
getting this into circulation and getting the capital committee involved is going to be really helpful to help make some decisions about what projects are relatively more or less urgent than others but i wanted to you know have the board at least have some opportunity to have you know be part of that before something gets sent around more broadly so um and i was working on this right up until this afternoon so it's uh you know it's definitely a work in progress uh same format you've seen in the past um that's another little wrinkle here is we um signed the contract with ClearGov, and while we thought a lot of their platform was attractive the capital uh, platform was really really good so between now and say february i think there's a very good chance that i migrate all of this over to the ClearGov platform which i think is going to make it a lot better administratively for staff including me as well as for the public but we're not there yet. So we're still working with this kind of Excel uh, format, uh, which is the typical way that capital plans are done, but I think ClearGov is gonna be better. So so the I'm not gonna go through each of the detail sheets, but I think you all know the format. It's each of the projects has its own kind of detail sheet. What I am gonna do is focus on those that are penciled in for FY25 and, I'll go back to the summary page. You can see at a glance, you know, $1.9 million of projects in a single year. That's way more than we've ever proposed. I do not, let me just be clear. I do not think that's what's going to be going to town meeting in the spring. I think there's going to be a lot of churn between now and the end of January and probably even more after that to winnow that down to something that's a, a manageable number, because I think 1.9 is is too much for a single budget year, not just financially, but administratively to even, you know, spend that money. So I'll walk you through what comprises that. Uh, replacement of the zero turn mower uh, for DPW, that's 20, estimated 24,000. Uh, replacing a tractor at 85,000 DPW, replacing a dump truck, 225,000 DPW. Uh, so this is where, you know, once this all gets circulated, whether in this form or revised, that's where the capital committee, you know, will go kick the tires and kind of weigh in on, on which of these really need to happen next year and which can wait. Uh, exterior painting of the public safety complex. This has been on there for a number of years. Uh, it's the first time it's proposed. Uh, that's estimated at 75,000. Uh, demolition of the park and rec building next to Page School. That's obviously not something that has to happen next year, so that could be easily pushed out. But Brian had talked to some prospective uh, demolition contractors and came up with the number 85,000 for that. <coughs> One thing I shaded in yellow as a zero, but it's really ties into that earlier discussion, this whole issue of the uh, DPW kind of uh, that second building in the water department building. I do think that warrants like a site visit, maybe one of these Saturdays, just meet out there and walk around because I think it's going to matter a lot what your board's vision is for that as to whether we're looking at kind of maintaining or whether we're looking at potentially more substantive changes to uh, better, you know, accommodate, pro, you know, kind of programmatic needs. Uh, Middle Street Bridge replacement, I have a zero, but I highlighted it because that could be something other than zero by spring. Uh, we're carrying funds for town office generator, 90,000. Um, Coffin Street culvert replacements, it looks like a Oh, that's in there twice. Let me delete that. Um, that's one I just added in. I don't have a number yet, but that's one, as you know, the, the goal is to get the scope for the engineering and permitting done, bring that forward to you at a future meeting for ARPA funding so that we could get that put these culverts put out to bid and actually have construction costs by Springtown meeting. So right now I have zero because I'm not going to just guess uh but the goal would be to have real numbers 
uh, annex flooring replacement. I'm not carrying anything, but that's something you may recall. Uh, the suggestion had been made that rather than just do this small section of floor needed to replace the sewer pipe, uh, that you know, did we want to consider doing the whole flooring? So why don't we? I'll stop. Pause for a minute for discussion just on the DPW ones because that's a lot right there. Or, or I could just keep going. I would just keep going because really, okay. you know, all right. I'm going to think about all this later, which we'll do. All right. So in the fire section, we have uh, five hundred and fifty thousand carried for a tanker truck replacement, and uh, seventy-five thousand for a rescue boat and trailer. Oh. Now, Paige, I've shaded all of the numbers in yellow, and I'll tell you why. So the floor repairs, those of you who've been around for a while know that those had been done on a kind of a piecemeal basis. And um, so we had carried the number 40,000. There's nothing magic about that number. If you wanted to do more in a certain year, you could increase that number. So it's in at 40 because that back when Wayne had uh, initially proposed this, he had proposed a, you know, kind of let's carry 40 grand a year and just do it on a, on a uh, continual basis. Um, but that's basically the hallways, which are uh, those floors um, need periodic replacement. And it in includes some, uh, I think there's like uh, some asbestos in the like glue. Uh, so that's part of what drives that cost. The uh, page interior improvements. This is just miscellaneous stuff. I met with Jonathan again, Jonathan Seymour again last week. And he said there's, you know, it's a matter of when you want to do it or if you want to do it. But it's uh, there's a he's got a whole a whole list of issues, which, you know, I, I can. Uh, I have it here in the paper form, but. Um, uh, let's see the parking lot and lighting improvements. This is one I'm I'm pretty certain would be pushed out. The idea is potential changes in the circulation pattern for paid school for the parent pickup drop off, um, and also the acknowledgement that there's really no lighting out there after dark. Uh, so that's something I I just don't think this is you know I don't think we're going to be ready yet with that. Um, uh, elevator, we, we talked a lot about that. The, you know, Jonathan thinks, and he's, he's going to keep checking the, this to see if he can get a number, but he thinks that we'd have to expend, uh, somewhere around $65,000 to get an elevator design, um, to even know what it would cost to replace the elevator and what what do we mean by that does it mean fixing the two existing ones so they work or actually getting to where there's a single elevator shaft that goes from the bottom floor to the top floor that's something that i'm sure is going to be in limbo you know for some amount of time partly because of the study that's ongoing uh the entrance roof leak repair uh last week me and jonathan and brian and caitlin matt and Brian is looking at these next two I or this next item, the uh, leak repair, uh, because he's just kind of getting up to speed on some of these projects where he really hasn't had any involvement uh until until recently. So he's gonna go out and take a look and see, you know, how you know how big a deal he thinks that is and you know what he what we think it would cost. This forty thousand number is carrying over from a number Wayne had put together a while back. Uh, the standpipe installation, this is something Dwyer could speak to much better than I can, but it, I gather it's very important um, for fire protection. And then, yeah, this internal bar, uh, bus, car, pedestrian circulation. Uh, basically, we've we've had some meetings on this, and I shipped a concept off to TEC to see if they could look at it for feasibility. Uh, and I haven't heard back from Kevin. That was about, I think, a week and a half ago. I sent him something uh, that had come out of a meeting that I'd had with uh, with Butch, um, Jonathan, uh, Chief Dwyer, uh, Sergeant Parento was there, 
uh, and Mark Marlowe was there, and we were talking about kind of the overall site site conflicts and uh, what might work better. So that that's an absolutely made up number. That three hundred thousand is a completely made up number. Uh, going down the list, I added pickleball courts with no number. I have no idea if that's a level of service that board is intending to provide, but if if you are at some point, we'll need to put some resources toward at least uh, like a feasibility study. That wouldn't be subject to the capital plan because that would be presumably CPA funds, but it's something I wanted to put in here just to kind of get it on people's radar that if that is something that the town wants to provide in the next five years, we should start getting into the capital program. And uh, I think that was all I had for general fund and, and I didn't have anything on water fund. So I know you can't really, you know, advise on this without seeing the details and what's behind these sheets. So, um, you know, I could uh, send those around maybe as a separate packet or I could send out the whole 100 and, uh, 115 projects, but but I wanted to focus tonight on the uh, those that are at least penciled in for next year. And then on the finance side, I have a separate workbook with the uh, stabilization balance. And this is actually now set up pretty well. So if we took the 1.889 and let's say we pretended that was a real number, um, if we, you know, and let's say we carried in that, um, money for a feasibility study for pickleball and we said that's going to be funded by cpa that'll kind of run through the numbers and reduce the projected impact on stabilization uh so we finally got this design to where and or for instance like the page circulation the paving and striping and signage could all be done with chapter 90 funds so let's say we find that's 145,000 of chapter 90 funds that's all going to run through and help us make projections on what we're going to need in the future for stabilization. Because uh, just because it's in capital doesn't mean uh, the assumption should be it's uh, paid from stabilization. That's not necessarily true. Or let's say with, uh, you know, Middle Street Bridge, if we put the full amount in and, you know, we put in the, all the grant money. So that's something that I really do think that, um, uh, I'm more, I think it's a better use of time in the next eight or 10 weeks to get this migrated to ClearGov than to try to perfect what is a kind of older way of, you know, the Excel is an older way of doing things. So I'm I'm really hoping that the ClearGov allows us to make, you know, the uh, financial projections and things in a way that's less um, um, manual. So, yeah, I mean, I know you can't really respond because you don't have anything specific in front of you, but um, if if we okay, want so to... So I think if you're targeting having that available for early February, then for... Uh... Well, this will be... I, I got to get this capital plan and circulation, you know, ASAP, so the capital committee can get started. So I'm planning to circulate basically the same kind of thing they've seen in the past, and then to get the discussion started on the things, because if something's penciled in for FY25, it means that when the department got me, you know, their list, that was what they said. So this is where we, you know, now need to squeeze that and look at relative urgency across departments. And we did, you know, it felt like we were doing some of that in the fall, but then a bunch of things came up and and it just, we we had some good momentum up until like, early fall and then you know it just got subsumed with the hundred other things we're doing so um so yeah i think that's going to need to happen really with the committee uh is to squeeze some of these out because i don't think we can do all this in a year uh and, but then when i reference ClearGov, i'm i'm saying i want to migrate this over which isn't really anything to do with the committee I got to get something in circulation, you know, much, you know, like soon. Maybe this week. Uh, but, but I, you know, I don't want to, uh, I mean, if, if you guys look at this and, you know, I don't want people to over interpret 
they see something in here and think that that's like something the board is proposing. Uh, but that's not the case. That's, you know, it's my job to start the process, capital committees, just, you know, and, and whether something gets onto the warrant or not is ultimately going to be up to you all. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to get much farther than this with this. Yeah. Just a good overview. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I think getting something into circulation, acknowledging to everyone, hey, look, there's more here than we're realistically going to be able to fund. And then just getting getting those, uh, you know, meetings going where the department heads are meeting with the capital committee and and, uh, you know, they can make recommendations on on which of these really are FY25 issues. Uh, it, it is, you know, we have more variables this year even than really ever before, because uh, primarily because of the page study, which is going to include a detailed list of projects with timeframes. Uh, and we're not gonna have that in hand until probably we'll have a draft in December, but we won't have that closed out till January or February. And then the water, which we now realize we're not gonna get what we've been thinking we were gonna get, uh, but I don't think the water is a big deal for next year because by any measure, there's no new water capital projects that they're taking on next fis fiscal year. Everyone's focused on church and prospect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Um, any yeah. any thought on, uh, you know, pickleball? I think it's good to have it on there. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's legit. Yeah. And I think I Wendy, I think your idea is 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 great. And I just uh, you know we got to make sure there's follow through on someone putting together a uh, CPC proposal. Um, yeah, I think that I think you would suggest that the select board, and I think that's a good idea because yeah. Park and Rec they don't have other property that they're going to be putting this on, so it doesn't make sense for them to carry it forward and have it be on the town property that the select board is in charge of. Right. Yeah. All right, we have four minutes, three minutes now till 930. Um, what did you hope to get out of the correspondence from Comcast and Verizon? Uh, just sharing it because it's addressed to you. I think obviously there's, you know, a somewhat longer time frame on each of those, but at the same time, we don't want it to creep up on us. I think the biggest question that you'll need to resolve not tonight but at some point is what role will the board play and what role if any will the CAC uh, play okay. any preliminary thoughts it looks to me like you really don't have a lot of choice right I mean prescribe what has to happen it's not like we can't say you're out of town I'm not even sure have you done this before no it's a six-year agreement, correct? Have you been involved? Okay. So you're saying that the CAC has to do it? Is that no, no. Uh, well, I would think they would, or I think they would assist if they. Well, I would hope they would assist, and then we have to execute. Yeah. So yeah, but what what can you do to change the contract? You know, what are you looking to accomplish? Just want to know a lot there. You know, you got beef about the rates or about the service going up, but that doesn't help anything. Mm -hmm. So I don't know exactly what we're looking to do with it. Um, I think I it would be reasonable to refer it to the cable advisory committee and just ask for their input. Or I mean, what is the first step? Yeah, I think getting uh, getting the current license agreements to them, along with these letters, making them aware of the timeframes, and I think. I, I share some of the same questions Chris has in terms of really what's in play in terms of what's bargainable and what's kind of, it, it is what it is. And I think it would be important to provide some or obtain really some guidance on that from some authority, whether that's outside council or not outside council, you know, whether that's legal council or whether that's uh, like, peers in other communities, but something to kind of set the four corners. Because uh, I don't think, I mean, let's say CAC comes up with lists of uh, like wish lists that don't end up 
being in any way realistic. I think we don't want to be in a position of after the fact saying, oh, that's not real. Like, you know, the idea that Verizon's going to come in and build us a cable studio. I'm not saying that's their suggestion, but let's say something like that was suggested. It would be helpful to have some outside expert tell us really what's in play here. Yeah, because we're just like in the dark, trying to like, where do you go with this? Mm. So one thing that I did make in my notes is the cable advisory committee is still lacking a member. So at the same time, if there's two or three people listening out there, if anybody has any legal experience or or knowledge relative to these agreements, that would be helpful if they would consider joining and participating in some fashion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see that we can also ask MMA. They they may have some insight. There's a, a reference document noted in the letter. Um, so I'm going to look see if that's going to be useful at all. This is actually from um, the, yeah, from the Department of Telecommunications. So. Now, when the cable advisor, yeah. the whole thing, I, I don't think we're at far enough. Yeah. It was interesting that um, the terms of the uh, agreements could be uh, much longer than yeah. could be up to I think for a first license ten years and for subsequent license I think it was up to fifteen years you could license for. You could have the fact that they have to put in right, right, yeah. They always had. My understanding is they always had been ten years, and with the Verizon one that that was renewed. Verizon didn't want to go past six years. Okay. Which they uh, attributed to the uncertainty to do with all the streaming and competition and, you know, their changing of their uh, kind of business model. Yeah. 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 Actually, I had those numbers slip, by the way. It's 15 years for initial and 10 for subsequent. Um, one yeah. other thing I would note on correspondence is that we received an email to the select board email address on clarifying hunting on Riverbend. And so um, I think Angus is going to work with his staff to just put a sign out there to say what the current bylaw states. There's apparently a lot of people hunting with rifles. Oh, I've seen them. Yeah. So, so I mean, we're not. It goes with shotguns, not with rifles, because mm -hmm. hunting with rifle and, and masses. That's what was reported okay yeah probably. so it's going to be a while before we have any kind of comprehensive hunting program but at a minimum we're thinking we can put out signs that say what the current bylaw is and just the time to make hunting unless you have written permission for it right, right. So, so that's what we're going to do just because people have told residents who said you should be hunting that we have permission so that they don't so that's just a heads up <laughs> um any future agenda items or follow-up a couple of little Sneakly things. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know who to approach with this on Angus. I, Farm Lane, the house that they're building, probably number four. There's a little duplex white one there. Whenever they decided to grade the front hill, they took our uh, no parking this side of the street sign and they threw it in the grass. Oh. Which, which what is it? Farm Lane, right by the high school, yeah. the little house. They just didn't like our sign, so they, I took some photos. Said, I didn't know if DPW or building inspector. I, done anything I don't want to step on toes so I don't know what the process is but yeah when you see something like that don't hesitate to to you know call Butch or call um call Sam yeah but I get concerned that I call and they have to respond quickly because you're on select board not a resident so I don't want to yeah that's fair or send something to uh to Jim let Jim know who you are in the town Okay, that'll work next time. Jim will get cat out of the way. Uh, <laughs> uh, FYI, tomorrow night we've got the Pawtucket Regional um, uh, uh, the agreement with me. We're meeting. Great. Um, yeah. Just try to pick a chair and schedule dates. Um, can I ask a question, Angus? Mm -hmm. Baldwin sent their little letter. With the changes they wanted to see, I'm looking at it, and it's already in the agreement. Am I mistaken? Uh, I heard you say that the other week or the other day, and and I I think you've looked at it more closely than I have. Okay. But I think, side know, by side today. Yeah, the burden needs to be on them if they're if they're proposing something. Tell us what, and they'll have. But that that I think that'll get resolved tomorrow night. 
Okay, because other than that, should, everything else has already been pre-approved, so we should be good on that. Um, should be, yeah. I don't want to ask outside of the meeting. Uh, good where, where, where's that uh, meeting? Uh, the high school, I think it's room 1136. Okay. I won't be there. I just want to make sure it wasn't here. That's not a meeting. <laughs> where's that? I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, I just wasn't, I want to make sure we didn't have an accidental overlap. Room 1136. So I did post the wetland bylaw meeting just so we can feel free to. Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, great. Yeah. Okay. yeah. As well as cable Actually, and cable advisory. Jim posted it. But you don't technically have to post those, right? We're not having conversations. But you about never know what's happening. You know. Know. My uh, my laptop was on uh, battery and ran out, so I'm I'm okay. calling on my personal phone now. We're all done. How about this? Motion to adjourn. All right. Second. All in favor. Aye. Get some sleep, Angus. Thank you for. Get well. <laughs>